Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, a 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. We are joined today by Pidge. Hello. I am a level 9 rock gnome transfiguration wizard. I'm a Nuzlocke challenge character, so if I die for more than a minute, I'm dead for good. Moxie. Oh, well, hello there. I'm a 7 foot tall uh, fear bog paladin of tear and uh, got my hair all teased up nice and high the higher the to the higher the hair, the closer to tear, and boy, am I ready to, to get going this morning. And Amiri. Hi, I'm Amiri. I am a Celestial Warlock Wood Elf. I have a olive green hooded scarf that I wear to cover up the cat ears atop my head. You're all in the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall. The Guild Hall is a large building with a bar, a sitting area with wooden tables and chairs and a wall with a cork board and job flyers posted. Oh, well, uh, hey there, guys. Good morning. How's everybody today? I yawn and stretch. I'm like, ah, oh, coming into work at 9 o'clock in the morning. I know we're self-employed people, but it's good to stick to a schedule, right? Oh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Boy, if I'm not on a schedule, I just feel kind of lost in the universe. I'm ready. He's just going to come up, drinking a glass of milk. She's pretty uppity having a son. So she's 9 a.m., wide awake. Okay. <laughs> it's good that this has to do with the morning and sleeping. So, uh, because, well, you'll know. All right. What are you guys going to do? Well, it's, it's, uh, it seems like, well, there's enough of us here, the... The tavern's kind of quiet right now. Do you want to check the job board, see if, uh, go ahead and knock something out today? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. All right. Oh, there's this one. All right. Sleepless and Hellest. A small village is having difficulty sleeping that they believe is magical related they're having nightmares and they require the guild to figure out what what is going on okay so nightmares uh, what's the name of the small town hellest h-e-l-n-e-s-t everyone in the hell nest has difficulty sleeping okay yep oh goodness i just I don't know about you two, but I, uh, Moxie's got to have her beauty, her beauty seeds. I can't imagine a whole town. Sleep? What's that? Oh, it's, it's, it's the most delightful thing. You lay down, you close your eyes, and you just, you have safe adventures all night long. You wake up stronger. It's pretty great. There was a case study of a town in, it was near a uranium mine in, uh, like the Ural Mountains. I don't know exactly where, like near the former USSR. And, uh, they actually like kept falling asleep during the day. Exact opposite problem. It was, uh, we're not really sure, but they say it was like hydrocarbons volatilely in the air, making people fall asleep in the middle of the day. This is probably not that. <laughs> Okay, so Hellnest is near the city of Gertie Lou. Oh, it's near Gertie Lou. Okay. Well, that's south of here, right, guys? Yeah, didn't you? Uh, you've been there, right? Yeah, I was there really recently. <laughs> you guys were talking about uh, some some kind of dessert. I think it sounded really good. Beignets. You know, I did. I went and got donuts. <laughs> And then ate like six of them. It oh, was what? it's still it's not good, not a good plan. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, they have really good beignets down there. Um, so there's a train that goes to Hellness. DM, do we do we just to get to go right there? You should be able to get to Gert to from Gertie. Lou. The train to goes to Gertie Lou can do the job. Oh yeah. All right. So or, it was a riverboat, right? Oops, sorry. Um. Oh, okay. Well, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Train to a riverboat to to Gertie Lou. How big are our chocobos at this point? Oh yeah, that's right. Winona, she's not been out in a while. Oh, the ch 
Chocobos. <laughs> That's new. Okay. Looks cautiously at my plus one animal handling skill. <laughs> well, we can we can take the train to the boat and the, <laughs> the boat to the to the town. <laughs> we'll take a cart. All right. Because so I had we can the get all of the carriage for the chocobos. Oh, I definitely trust my carriage sitting skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we want to put the sort of like a ferry where we put the chocobo carriage on the riverboat and then we get off at Gardilu with the chocobo carriage and then we ride the chocobo carriage to Hellnest? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Winona is very well behaved. <laughs> okay. I look up at the six foot tall chocobo, three feet tall myself. I'm like, I'm glad. <laughs> now I got a name for mine. Rider. R Y D E R. <laughs> yes. We agree, so we do it. <laughs> okay, so you're traveling by train and then by water. Okay. All right, the train ride is fairly uneventful. You, I guess you're riding the train to Gertie, or to where are you riding the train to? We put the Chocobo carriage from Nikamoy onto the ferry riverboat thing. Uh, and then we're disembarking from the ferry boat at Gardy Lou with a chocobo carriage to take us the rest of the way to Hellnest. Okay. Give me one second. So just like control H, replace train with a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I wish Audacity could control H. <laughs> That'd be great. Every time I breathe in, replace it with silence. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The as I said, the ferry ride is fairly uneventful, and you reach the town of Gertie Lou without any uh, difficulty. Well, you guys were right. This town does have a, a certain fragrance to it, doesn't it? Post Mardi Gras. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Okay. So, you unload your your cart with the chocobos, and you're on the road. It is about a day's travel from Gertie Lou to Hellnest. I'm going to sit in the carriage and let my friends do all the animal handling checks. <laughs> Makes sense with the how your animal handling skill is. Uh, all right. All right. Well, Winona is uh, connected to my um, fine steed, so she just she just gets me. She just understands what I need. She's she's a good she's a good Winona. Okay. I don't have any special skills. I just Ryder likes me. I raised her. Yeah, imprinted. Bird's imprint. A imprint. But just in case, 17 on animal handling. Just for good measure. To help with Ryder. Okay. That day, on the long, traveling along, you make a perception check. I, I did a random encounter generator. A random encounter and a well, random encounter decided to... Natural 20 or a 22. <laughs> 10. I'm inside the carriage. <laughs> Are you guys sitting like out front the carriage and then I'm I'm inside it? Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, three figures are blocking your path currently. They're they're in the road, so I see them super good. <laughs> um. Both Moxie and Mary can see these figures. It's a pretty good, a pretty easy perception check. All right, I will rein in Winona and Ryder. <laughs> I, I, excuse me, they're uh... anyone who recognizes knows Boar will recognize these kind of figures. Uh, uh, sorry to uh, uh, bother you, Judge uh, Minnow fellas, but. Uh... This all of... road you want past, you pay. Uh huh. We're gonna need just a little more details there. Uh, 
Can I? I'm this our road. This our road. You want pass? You pay. Well, I. Uh... I'm sure we can work out something. Is uh, what's the uh, yeah, three minotaurs are blocking your path currently? So, is this a sliding rate? Can't you guys just you know, we're kind of in a really big hurry here. Is there any way we could just like have you move aside, please? You want path? Pass? You pay. Without pay. <laughs> or I'll tell you what. Dead bodies pass. Boy, you guys are just a... Well, dead bodies aren't very nice. It's not very, uh... You know, Quattle frowns upon that. I would, uh, not go that route. You want pass, you pay. Or pay well, with life. We take either way. How much money? Yeah, what's that toll? 100 gold. Oh, that's nothing. Here, 100 they pa they part and let you pass. Boy, the uh, <laughs> the infrastructure here could really use a, a boost if the tolls are this high. And by the way, just for future reference, I would not threaten anybody again. <laughs> you don't know when trouble could come your way. Friendly advice. <laughs> These guys are basically not really. It's not really their road, but they're. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moxie knows she'll she'll lean over uh, to Amiri and be like, "I think on the on the way back, we should probably just you yeah, know clean clean that little bit up." <laughs> that sounds good. La 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 la. Why did the carriage stop? La 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> what Pedge doesn't know won't hurt her. Let's not you know she, we don't need to stress her out. Okay. Onward, Winona and Ryder. The well, the carriage moves forward, and after that is a fairly uneventful trip. At nightfall, you reach the edge of the town. The town seems to be fairly deserted at the time, because it's late night. I guess the people are trying to get sleep, which is rather avoiding them, but what are you guys going to do? Well, we're going to need to find some place to hitch up uh, the chocobos and store the wagons. So, uh, is there a, a tavern, perhaps? or a... Yes, the bronze horse. Oh, look, why, Nona, kind of like you, but a horsey. <laughs> uh, does it look fairly uh, hopping or is it, you know, busy? Uh, yeah, it's somewhat busy. As you enter, you can tell immediately that everyone is on edge. There are bags under every eye, and everyone seems to be in a grouchy mood. What do you want? Uh, Moxie looks left and right just a second before she realizes that the grump is coming towards her party. Oh, uh, oh yes, us. Uh, very lovely to meet you, uh, Moxie, Paladin of Tear, representative of uh, the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild. Uh, we have been hired to deal with your sleep deprivation issue. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Sorry, I haven't had a lot of sleep in a couple days. So, uh, so we've heard. The blasted nightmares. They're making it difficult. And uh, those just started a few days ago? Yeah. Did anything yeah, did. anything else interesting or notable also happen a few days ago? No, not that I can think of. A couple old ladies came into town, but those are the only visitors we've had in a while. Oh, so your stable is empty then. Do you mind if we put our chocobo carriage in there? Oh, go ahead. I'll did they put Horses in there, or chocobos, or unicorns? Yeah, they're or... set up for horses, but they have enough space for your birds. No, did the old ladies? Did they put... No, they came in town, left. Are they still nearby, do you know? Maybe camping? I have or... no idea where they went. I don't care. 
All right. Well, all right. so we'll keep that little feather in our caps there. Uh, a little, some elderly women. You know, she, she looks back at Amiri and Pidge. You know how dangerous the elderly can be and winks. <laughs> I recently experienced a traumatic cat lady. So before that, I would have said, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to be like, oh, uh, cat lady. <laughs> yes, the elderly are dangerous, she says seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really caused some uh, trauma with that one, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, I love it. The fantasy world, the only place where the elderly are truly respected. Yeah. <sighs> Except cat ladies that kidnap tabaxi, wear tigers. Yeah. Oh, fear is a type of respect. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right. So if the chocobo carriage is in the stables and we're, I, I don't know. Mary, what do you do for chocobos? Like, how do you get them settled? I don't know how it works in Final Fantasy, but I would imagine the same way you would any animal. Kind of pet the feathers, cool it, calm it down a little bit, rub under the chin. Ah, chin scratches. Maybe give it a bag. bag. Maybe a bag of meat worms. Yeah. I was going to (laughs) say carrot. Yeah. Uh, Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, fella. I didn't catch your name. Uh, the name's Helder. Ald- Alder? Alder. Alder the innkeeper. Should we also be wary of the elderly? She waggles her eyebrows. <laughs> he just groans. You need anything else other than the stable? Do you have any rooms available? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Take a Got couple. Got a couple of ro- All right. It'll be... How many rooms do you need? Oh, uh, just the one. Yeah, Three one's girls? fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That'll be one gold, five silver a night. All right, I'll cover it. Uh, thanks, Mary. All right. Uh, quick question, in your opinion, uh, Mr. Alder, who seems to be suffering the worst from the sleep deprivation? Who seems either the sickest or the grumpiest? Or both? It appears to affect everyone here. But but nobody, like, is taking it harder? It's hard to say. Everyone is pretty severely affected by this. All right, well, uh, if you want to be the guinea pig, then, <laughs> uh, I can uh, do a little uh, palate and lay on hands here, see if, see if uh, that helps with if- your sleep this evening. I'll try. If anything, to let me get some sleep. I was thinking of trying suggestion, too. Ooh, yes. Let's do both on two different people. Okay. Is there anybody else in this inn I could try something on, too? I could use some sleep. The, bar- uh, the man dressed as a blacksmith nearby raises his hands. Okay. Come on over here, sir. He uh, He walks over. I haven't been able to work do my job right ever since this blasted nightmare has started. Actually, you know what? Maybe we should take a second room, and we could put both people in the same room, and I could cast alarm on the door. A third person. Yes. Oh, yeah. I like it. I think, yes. I think this is called the uh, the scientific arcane method of experimentation. <laughs> yes. Maybe it's like a Sandman or something coming in, and if they're asleep. Yeah. I'm willing to give it a shot. So, Alder the Innkeeper, we do lay hands. What's the blacksmith's name? Breeden. Breeden. And I'm sure there's a bartender back there. Hey, bartender, do you want to sleep well? Uh, Sure. Nate. Nate? Nate. Okay. If this works, I'll be grateful. Okay, so we're going to alarm the door of Nate. We're going to suggest Breeden sleeps. (laughs) (laughs) How do you want to say Mary, go ahead and do your suggestion. (laughs) All right, you will 
go upstairs to the bed in room whatever they're in. <laughs> room two of our sleep study. Yes. <laughs> and you will get 12 hours sleep. Whoa. <laughs> they haven't slept in a while. He could use a nice. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Oh. Without nightmares, right? Without nightmares. Here's the thing. We have fallen asleep, but then we wake up from nightmares. And uh, Moxie will take Alder's, Alder's hands in hers and close her eyes and go, may the power of tear heal you. Ha! And raises one <laughs> hand. And he ra- pumps the- I don't feel any different. Okay, Wait. we'll find out in the morning. Yeah, it's a test. We'll see. And that should that will cure disease or neutralize poison if if on the off chance either of those are affecting him. Okay, so what do you guys do for the night? Well, we could uh try to sleep too. I mean, we don't want to get too exhausted. Take up watch. Yeah, let's do that. We'll take turns trying to sleep. I only need 4 hours. Of meditation. I would like... (laughs) uh, This is probably dumb, but I want to wake up a tree. (laughs) (laughs) So here's another scientific magical experiment method, right? Um, (laughs) Is it only organisms made of flesh who are affected by these nightmares? (laughs) So... I would like to spend eight hours, which I guess is the night. You're going to cast um, Awaken? Yeah. <laughs> oh, his face. <laughs> the DM is like, shock. <laughs> Maybe angry. <laughs> uh, I want to cast Awaken on a tree. Um, so I actually want it to be a huge tree. Oh, I'm, not, I'm just shocked. I've never actually had someone actually cast that spell in a... Well, can't. you're going to have to spend all night if you're going to do it. So yep. I'll wait. Yep. Okay. And there's Thankfully, some... I dozed on the way here in the carriage with nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. This is a really nice region. There's some real big trees. Okay. All so right. I we'll t- we'll, we'll come back to that in the morning, okay? Because <laughs> it's going to take um, till morning for this to do, and I have some stuff to take care of during the night. So. <laughs> okay. And that does put me outside for the night, you guys. So. <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, Moxie will uh, take a shift guarding you, and then. Amiri can take a chef guarding you. Yeah, as I said, I only need four hours. So I'm good. And would you guys like to name the tree? Well, maybe he already has our it. Sorry. Oh, that was presumptuous of me. Maybe, maybe it already has something it likes. Okay. Evens, lady, odds, dude. It's a dude. It's a dude tree. <laughs> Balrog? B O L O R G? Bullrog Bull Bull tree. Okay, but we'll come back to the uh, awakening of the tree <laughs> in a bit because I have, we have to come some up with night- his backstory and what he likes and what he doesn't <laughs> like, and if he has a crush on anyone. We have so many questions. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Pidge, close to the middle of the night, notices a fog begin to roll into town. Hmm, that's that's totally normal. Yep, yep. <laughs> and <I'm> Mary. <laughs> Mary, you're guarding me. <laughs> Nearby in the room where the people that are being tested are, you hear a scream ring out. The alarm is not tripped. Well, Moxie will go to the scream since she was attempting to sleep. Okay. Would you go into the room? Uh, yeah. I rush you into find, the room. You s- you see a bright flash, and then the and see a see a figure disappear, and all that's remaining in the room is the people that are uh, you are having the test on. They are having what appears to be horrible nightmares. I go, that's right, you run, and then I go over to the people and I start like making cooing sounds, like it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. You're okay. You're asleep. Go to sleep. Be asleep now. And I'm like trying to ease them back into normal slumber. Nothing you do can make them settle down. Before we continue that, can you read the alarm spell? Like what trips yep. the alarm spell? 
They simply have to pass through the door, through the a door or through the alarm. Magic means will of transportation have no effect on the alarm spell. So, so I set an alarm against unwanted intrusion. Choose a door, a window, or any area within range that is no longer than a twenty foot cube. Until the spell ends, an alarm alerts you whenever a tiny or larger creature touches or enters the warded area. When I cast the spell, I can designate creatures that won't set off the alarm. I could also choose whether the alarm is mental or audible. So I would have put it like right between the two beds, like triangulate it around the three. Oh, okay. Then never mind. The alarm does go off. Because it's only 20 feet, so I would have put it around. I thought it was specifically on an object like it used to be in previous editions. I apologize. Yes, the alarm goes off. So, That's re- there's a creature. Hmm. But Amiri and I are out at a tree, Bullrock. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Yeah, so Amiri Moxie rushed in, and the creature disappeared. So here. And she started soothing the sleeping people. Here in the alarm, oh. I would have been like, all right, I got to get in there. Yes, I continue awakening the tree because it's a thousand gold and I don't want to waste it. (laughs) Around the town, yells and screams can be heard emanating from various houses. I would like to use my divine sense, please. Okay, Uh, what does that do? As I am soothing these people, I sort of um, extend my senses out. And as an action, you detect good and evil until the end of your next turn. You can sense anything affected by the hallow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. Okay, you feel the presence of evil creatures, but briefly, and they vanish, and then they're out of your range. So whatever these things are, they're capable of... Well, either teleportation or something similar. Did it did it feel fiendish or undeadish? Fiendish. Fiendish. Alright. Coming into the room, I'm gonna go to the creature or the person that we just had sleep, didn't do any magic on. I'm gonna He's use being affected too. Detect magic on him. Uh, Ooh, clever. I don't know whether this is a magical effect or not. When Amiri enters, Moxie's going to go, oh, no, Pedge, and then runs out to the tree. <laughs> I'm sitting in the fog, whispering over a tree. There's screams in the darkness around me. I'm you hear fine. clump, 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 clump. <gasps> oh, wait. All right. No, you're good. I'm here. I keep going. Oh, it's Moxie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's magic. All right. Okay, and I can use an action to see a faint aura around it, any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and learn the school of magic, if any. Uh, it doesn't say what kind of magic it is. Evil magic. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this doesn't this literally does not say what kind of magic it is. It just says it's magic. So, do you I wish want I me to read the schools of magic again? It seems I do this every three episodes. I like doing it. Okay, so fifth edition, Schools of Magic. Oh, my computer's like, do you want this common search result? Yes. Okay. Abjuration, protect stuff. Illusion, make stuff seem like other stuff. Enchantment, make things do stuff. Divination, know all the stuff. I guess it's enchantment. Oh, okay. Because that's about the best thing I can think to... uh... Do, do with what the effect is, so... Okay, so we know this creature can enchant people. now, And we know it's a creature. Well, I know nothing. Will. I'm out in the middle of the fog. <laughs> Scared. There's screams. <laughs> Bullrog! Well, I, protect me! I know it's a creature because it set off my alarm. Mm, that's true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, alright. And I'll, yep. uh, take a defensive stance around uh, Pidge. You, so you've got a big armored boot on either side of you. Yay! <laughs> Good. Um, so do we see anything out in the fog outside? Nope. Hmm. So nothing tried to come whisper, uh, what is it? Enchantment magic in my ear. So being awake. So everyone in this town should become nocturnal 
and there will be no problems. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess we should ask them if they'd tried daytime napping. I'm going to try it tomorrow. <laughs> you guys can alarm spell me. <laughs> your experiment. How alarming. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Does anything happen to us in uh, the rest of the night? With So part of me wants awake. to use identify, but it's got to be an object. Yeah. If you're awake, so, yeah. Nothing happens. Okay. All right. Good morning, Bullrog. Welcome to the world. Hello. <laughs> This is a massive pine tree. It's huge sized. And it's charmed by me for one month. After that month, it can decide how it feels about me. But for now, it's like like how Ryder was towards a Mary. Imprinted upon its first opening its eyes, person it sees. Hello, little one. Oh, I like that. It speaks slowly because it's <laughs> a tree. Oh, and Tej is so tiny. Three feet tall, I look up at the, I'm going to say like 100 feet tall, I don't know how big huge is, and I'm like, hello, Bullrog. Greetings. <laughs> I have never been able to speak before. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, the fondest Desire of trees is to spread their, I guess, pine cones far and wide, and I thought I would help you with that and give you the ability to walk. Thank you. <laughs> and I was hoping that in exchange, you wouldn't mind reporting to me whether or not... Uh, do you sleep, by the way? That's a good question. <laughs> what is sleep? Hmm. Oops. Flaw in my plan. So... <sighs> <laughs> um, if you could, uh, I guess, uh, oh, and Mary, can you alarm the, like, one foot region next to Bullrog and set it to Bullrog? So, Bullrog, if you see any creatures, can you enter this one foot region that's alarmed, and then a Mary will hear it, and then we'll know that there's creatures outside? Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's all I can do. I don't know. Well, I don't know, Pidge. Maybe, maybe a little more specificity there because there's quite quite a lot of wildlife here oh yeah you don't want him like tripping it up over a chipmunk indeed i have a foggy uh dark creatures how are they described fiendishly evil teleporting fog creatures oh maybe he sleeps now that he's awake yes yes he'll probably sleep tomorrow night yeah, actually, uh, I think it is a creature now. So, welcome to sleep, Bullrog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pidge, what if he screams? I don't know what that's going to be like. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's Bullrog. <laughs> it's our guard outside. It's got more HP and hit points and like attack power than I do. So Yeah, I just got to he, he come back every eight hours to recast Alarm. Oh, okay. Ah, so yeah. So he has fifty nine hit points. I have forty eight, <laughs> and he has uh, resistance to bludgeoning and piercing damage, which makes him much stronger than me. So, okay. All right. Anyway, so that's Bullrog outside. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm gonna go sleep in that in room um, and be test subject number four. I'm gonna just real quick uh, inform the town about the giant um, <laughs> arbor guard they have now. Oh, yeah. And while the tree <laughs> remains mo motionless, it is indistinguishable from a normal tree. It has the false appearance trait. My daughter! My daughter! Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Not not the tree, though. You guys have fun. I'm going to go sleep. Can you alarm the, <laughs> <laughs> the room? <laughs> Where's my daughter? I will... Moxie rushes towards the distressed parent. Bye. <laughs> Bye, parent. <laughs> Uh, now I'm at an impasse. <laughs> oh, you can go. Okay. I I'll be test sleeping. Clump, 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 clump. Sir, how can I help? What do I... What you... There are a couple parents. My daughter, she's missing. She was in her bed last night. Uh, and she's gone. All right, real quick. Uh, 
how old? Uh, what what she look like? Uh, <laughs> little girl, but almost she was about to hit her thirteenth birthday. Blonde, uh, only about uh, not very tall, just an average little girl. Okay, all right. Uh, which one's your house? And he points at a nearby house. It's not gonna be like she was. They'll find her. It'll be like when she was a child. I don't like. Uh, oh, well, okay. Back up. Roll that train right back. <laughs> what happened when she was a child? I mean, she's still she a, a child, baby. but a, a baby child. She was kidnapped as a ch- as a baby. As well, this isn't the first time that she's gone missing. Uh okay. Where where was she when she did they find her when she was kidnapped? Yes, a week later, we found her. Where? She was safe and sound. Back in her bed? Question? No. Mark? Someone left her. Uh, someone found her. I don't know who. And they left her here. All right. Okay. Quick question. Totally going to go look for your daughter. Uh, has this happened to anyone else in the past? Not that I know of. 13 years. Okay. And were there any nightmares at that time? Well, their baby mm-hmm. went missing, Amiri. Of course they had nightmares. <laughs> I mean, over the town, was there anything of this magnitude? For a single day, but they went, uh, vanished after that. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So... That one's your house. Okay. Uh, Amiri, let's we're, let's go look around the outside, see if there's footsteps or anything. Okay, let's go do that. As I get close, I will cast Detect Magic. There is no magic currently in the area. Well, that's kind of good. So I'm sleeping safe and sound. <laughs> the, you see the effects of the spell, the, the uh, enchantment, but that's it. Um, is... Which room was uh, her room? They lead you into a little, what appears to be a little girl's room with a small bed and various dolls. Is her window cracked open? Nope. Were there any signs of forced entry at all in the night? By any chance? Nope. So Moxie, how do you get somebody out of the room? Because this creature could go through stuff, but the little girl can't. So they had to have shifted planes somehow. Or or some other sort of teleportation. Oh, you know, I saw Pedge do this thing once where she made somebody into mist and put them in a bottle. That's true. And <laughs> and there was a lot of mist last night, so I should check with Pedge to make sure she's not accidentally turning the town into mist. <laughs> First process of elimination, and then because that's probably not it, but you never know. Got to check. Uh, and see what her her hot take on this is. Yeah, and I could use dimension doors, so there are ways. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, they could also do that. How far out does that go? How do you? How far do you pop? Oh, just up upwards of five hundred feet. That is a really big police line. We would have to walk to see if there is any traces. You know, I only okay. saved a baby that way, but yeah. Well, now we're gonna save. An older baby. <laughs> <laughs> she looks off in the distance thoughtfully. Well, to an elf, 13 years is nothing. Yeah, still a baby. She's still a baby to me. So did I sleep uneventfully? Yes. Oh, I figured it out, guys. Diurnalism is bad. Nocturnalism is good. <laughs> well, first things first, we run around and tell everyone to start their daytime napping routines pronto. <laughs> While yes. we figure out the nighttime issues. Especially Alder. And Moxie takes a nap. Oh, after after checking with Pidge to make sure. Pidge, Pidge, you, you're not like accidentally misting people, are you? Because the night, tell her about the little girl and the backstory about the disappearing baby. And <laughs> Oh, so this fog has happened before, but only for a day. Hmm. Well, it. If they get the baby, the fog stops, right? So maybe it's not that diurnalism is good. Maybe it's that they got the child and the fog has stopped for good. So basically, we got to come back in another 13 years. <laughs> well, I think that parents would appreciate uh, getting their daughter back Well, they're just going to find her next week anyway. So. Well, that's true. <laughs> but what if something untoward happens to her and while she's gone? 
It's a fiend. It's a fiendish presence. I just yeah. It's it's not a good person. It's yeah. not like she's gone off for a, a fun weekend at Grandma's. Speaking of grandmas, let's ask other people if they've seen these old ladies 13 years ago, too. Or if this happens every 13 years, like, let's find a person older than 26 <laughs> and ask them if 13 times three years ago, this happened as well. Maybe we should go ask the father, too, if he knows any old ladies. Yeah, the grandma of the child. Also, I've given my... um. I have a transmutation stone. I've given it to Bullrog, who can now move 15 feet faster, which is, uh, or 10 feet faster. So Bullrog can move 30 feet per round. So I'm riding Bullrog, <laughs> <laughs> the huge pine tree. Nice. <laughs> That's my steed. All right. So finding an older person is quite easy in this town. There are a number of them that are above the age you're looking for. I want the oldest person I can find. The oldest, sitting on the front porch and oldest person. As long as there are no cats with her. A furbolg, <laughs> half-elk, and a giant pine tree, you know, there's a, a pidge hidden in it, show up on this person's front door. <laughs> okay, there is an older gentleman that is literally exactly what you're requesting. Moxie pulls out hard caramels and offers them. <laughs> The old, Their weakness. <laughs> he grins and grabs one. I like your style. <laughs> yeah, I know my audience. And she winks. Does this mean we get old war stories? If you want them, I don't. I can make up a few. I don't really have any war stories, but. <laughs> Although I may be older than you. He looks you up and down. Elf. Not surprising. <laughs> Well, uh, it's it's a, just a lovely to meet you, sir. I am Moxie. These are my associates. Ped, she's way up in that tree there, <sighs> whose name is Bullrog. Uh, say hi, Bullrog. I break cover. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and uh, this is my associate, Amiri. What can I do for you folks? What can I do for you? We are investigating a few things now. Uh, one, the sleeping issues. By the way, you will look fine, but I know that... Uh, Daytime yeah. napping is a uh, sort of uh, hobby once you get older. So I can see that you're probably doing all right there. And also, I'm still having some difficulty. A missing child that has previously gone missing. I wanted to know if maybe previously, previously, other children have gone missing. I remember that case. Uh -huh. A whole week we were searching for that child. I. We were surprised as any to find a child back on the doorstep. But we've never had anything like that happen before, not in my memory. And there was some uh, some older ladies that passed through town recently. Uh, as this is the only notable piece of information we've been given, I uh, feel, feel the need to follow up on that. Don't necessarily have uh, anything against older people. <laughs> Two older ladies came through. Yeah, I remember seeing them. Anything uh, familiar or distinctive about them? Nope. They, I don't remember much about them. You Unfortunately, have, I just you have saw them briefly. Them? I tried. They weren't too friendly. Did they speak common? Yes. Yes, they did. I heard them asking around, asking questions. About what? To, to who and about what? Just the local area. Some look... They're asking about a swamp nearby. Oh, what swamp is that? We like to sightsee, don't yeah, we, are, girls? Are there? Is there a swamp? Yeah, yeah, there is. Not too far from here. Pulls up map. <laughs> <laughs> there is lots of swamp. There's so many swamps. So the MFM bog. All right, got it. So the MFM bog is around Gardilu. Okay, and the local swamp is the Archwala. Mm -hmm. But that's like super small, right near Gardilu. Archwalla. That's it. Well, I definitely think we gotta go check that swamp out. You wanna be careful if you go there. I heard tell of a hydra. A hydra? Oh, I, I killed that. I say from up in the tree. I, I pop my head out from around the trunk and I say, hello, no more hydra. It made really good boots. I see. Oh, yeah, quite the capable team here you got. 
off paper, you get you really did take care of the Hydra? Yes. Okay. I need to catch up on the other podcasts, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> All right, oh. so no Hydra, check. <laughs> There could be more than one. I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, appreciate the chat. He pulls out a bag of candy himself. Those little fruit flavored ones. I like. Yeah. <laughs> and offers it to you guys. Return for the hard caramel. <laughs> oh, Bullrug. Try these. I cast detect magic on him. Oops, <laughs> I'm a bad parent. <laughs> Nothing magical about them. They're just ordinary candies. Okay. Now you can try these. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bullrog's going to hand you some pine cones and say, please plant these wherever you like. Thank you. All right, well, it sounds like uh, we need to get the town to a napping, hatch up the chocobos, and uh, head to the Archwala. How far away is it from where we are? I think we're in the Archwala Swamp. Yeah, it's kind of like a national park sort of situation. Yeah. The larger okay. area is called MFM Bog, but it stretches basically from the southeast border of Port City Dishope to the southwest border of Port City Nicolau okay, along the coast. I, I didn't realize that it was that. Uh, well, that's, that's so the, the sign bog. of the. Huh? Yeah, that's just the whole bog. The Archwala is smaller yeah. within that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. The local por portion, sort of like how California is a big place, and gotcha. then like the San Francisco area is like its own ecology. Suddenly, before you guys get the chance, you hear a loud commotion coming from town. Oh, hey, what now? Bullrog can move at 30 feet per second. <laughs> Oi, with the poodles already. <laughs> As two individuals are having a shouting match in the middle of town. All right, well, Moxie will approach. Before you reach the group, one of them pulls out a sword and proceeds oh. to stab the other man. O okay. Oh, goodness. All right, I... Moxie will go up and uh, try to grapple the stabby, stabby man. And I'm going to cure wounds the guy bleeding, the one that was just stabbed. Okay. You manage, and uh, Moxie, make a uh, grapple che a check, please. Fifteen? Yeah, you managed to restrain him. Let me at him! This, uh, you can't let, stop me! Ah, uh, hang on there, buddy. Let's see what's going on here. Let's everybody just calm down a little bit. And I got an 18 for persuasion. This man stole from me. I did not. That, you, I did not take any money from you. Uh, he's a liar. What did he steal? The one man believes that he was, the other man took his gold. The other man is uh, currently protesting, saying that he did not take anything from him. Basically, the, both of them show signs of extreme sleepiness right now. Is is there a uh, local jail or holding? Yes, there is. The local town guard walks up. We'll take them from you. Thank for you for the assistance. Oh, yeah, no. they just need to be separated. Uh, also, just, hey... Everybody, everybody over here, everybody looking, eyes on me. Yeah, good. All right. Daytime naps. Okay. Daytime naps. You all need to take them. That's how you're going to get your sleep until we sort this. Okay. Naps, naps. Looks at everybody. You, you got me? Guard. Naps. Okay. <laughs> and uh, 18 on that persuasion about the naps. <laughs> okay. They simply nod. I... Uh, Mary, are you able to cast Zone of Truth? I'm not. I cannot. I can okay. suggest, though. So I can suggest them to tell the truth. Okay. Do you want to use a spell slot on that? Uh, it would be my last one, because I use Cure Wounds. You haven't had any rest, have you? Not since the night. Um, 
Well, it's about to be night again, so we should sleep before nighttime. So this will be your last spell before we sleep. And then we'll wake <laughs> up as the sun sets. All right. So I can do that. Yeah. All right. So from way up in Bullrog, I actually, I just whispered to Bullrog, hey, Bullrog, tell everybody to pay attention and Mary will cast some magic. So Bullrog's like, everyone. And there's a huge tree talking to everybody. <laughs> Bullrog's going to lift the two people. <laughs> in pine cone hands pine tree hands and like the scales of justice hold the two people so these people will now be tested child Put me by tree down, you big pile of this firewood. is justice <laughs> hold on we're just we're just gonna do a test here <laughs> however it's going to suck if he passes the dc <laughs> <laughs> it's a commoner it's not all. <laughs> okay. So just he's got to make a wisdom. Wisdom. He failed. The one who's accused of stealing. He failed. I will do the one who said that the guy stole from. Him. Ooh, tricky. He be- he stole from me. He must. The one who suggested he stole from him believes it. Yeah. Now we know he really believes it. All right. So how much uh, gold did you have on you? What's your suggestion? I'm going to suggest that he tells us the truth for the next hour. He cannot lie. Well, he, okay. he, can, he can tell us his truth. Yeah, he's basically telling you his truth that he believes that so, he was robbed. How much gold did you have on you at the time that you were robbed? 40 gold. How much gold do you have on you now? Like he holds up his bag, which is obviously empty. Did you happen to go to a shop that you forgot? No. Did you leave it at home? He stole from me! Did you leave it at home? You are very tired. Um, yeah. hmm, he, he does have to tell the truth. He, the truth that he knows, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Moxie's just got to put her hand on Amiri's shoulder and go, I I see what you're trying to do, but I, I think they're just too tired to know what's real and what isn't, dear. Yeah. A large pine tree sets down both people and says, go sleep, sleep. All right. Yep. And then I, I will be like, all right, you know what? Just to calm y'all down, here's 40 gold. Leave this nice gentleman alone. Go get some sleep. Okay, yeah, basically, he he did not, he actually believed that the man had robbed from him, so. Yeah, we're He had good. no way of saying otherwise, so. I think we're all on the same page. Okay. All right, well, we need to get some daytime naps ourselves, so uh, real quick, Moxie's going to go update the parents, let them know they also need the nap what we're doing to look for their daughter, where we've gotten so far in the investigation, because nothing helps uh, parents of a lost child more than, besides getting their child back, uh, knowing that stuff is happening and giving them updates. So doing that. And goes and takes a nap. And Bullrog would like to offer his limbs to you because he can hold you way above the ground, safe. He has so many hit points. Oh, and yeah. he doesn't have to sleep right now. He doesn't have to sleep until the night time when he's going to be our test subject. <laughs> uh, Moxie will gladly accept. Uh, it's very, uh, very nostalgic to get to sleep in a, in a large, in a large cradling tree. <laughs> okay. You guys managed to get a good day's rest in. Uh, Moxie drools wildly. The entire time, so anybody that happens to walk underneath her. <laughs> yep. Well, everybody oh, yeah. should be False asleep. False appearance. Yeah, we told them. Oh, yeah, they deserve it if they get slimed. But she's <laughs> just that tired. <laughs> All right, you guys get your rest in. Yeah, I'm going to roll for the staff of charge because it's been 24 hours. How does this work? Staff, staff of hmm. Staff of change. The magical staff has 10 charges. I used 5 to cast Awaken. It regains 1d6 plus 4. So that's at least 5, right? So I, do I have a d6? Oh, there it is. 
Okay, it regains eight charges, so it's fully charged. I could make another bullrog. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a, a smaller, uh, able to get in and out of homes bullrog. I have the stats for awakened shrub. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so staff of change is recharged. All right, keep going. Okay. It is late afternoon when you guys wake up. From your rest. Well, except for Mary, because you only read it required half the time, but... Mm -hmm. I spent the other four <clears throat> reading a book. This is why you read so many books. Ah. Oh, at, at higher levels, I don't have to sleep at all. So, when Moxie wakes up, she wants to first cast uh, or extend her divine sense to see if there's anything to worry about in the immediate vicinity. So, not currently, no. Good, good. She looks around at the town. Good, and then goes to hitch up. It's a good thing Quaddles don't really sleep. Oh yeah. Um. So is Bluerock the only one who needs to sleep tonight? Because everyone else in the town slept during the day. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Bluerock. Um. We will protect <laughs> you. Also, you have way more HP than me, so you're fine. <laughs> um. Yeah. I'm checking real quick to see if uh, Nahiri has to. Yeah, Everyone Nahiri in the town seems to be a lot better rested currently. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. So the sun is setting. Nahiri may have slept just now with us and may not have. And yeah. the whole town did. And Nahiri slept with me. All right. Okay. Well, good. Then we can set the town to, to different uh, guard points to keep watch during the night. And we can make our way into the Archwalla Swamp. Oh, um... Maybe? Um, so we, we do have a, a... There's a possibility that these uh, fiendish fog creatures could come back looking for targets, and the only one asleep would be Bullrog, so we'll know exactly where they'll come to. Ooh. And we, we've we set a trap for them. Okay. I want to do something like that would I really wish there was a spell that would stop people from moving <laughs> like just glue them to the ground in that spot I don't have hold that person spell. hold person I don't have that <laughs> yeah I have so I instead I, I've got bullrog bullrog can try to hold them but if they teleport I don't know I don't know I have banishment I, that's the opposite I'd have to see them though <laughs> That's that's the opposite. That's the makes them go away when we don't want them to. We just want to question these people, right? Like, slash. I, I guess we could kill one, tie them up, and revivify them. So, are you guys staying in town right now? Uh, yeah. yeah. And just for the moment, just because we happen to have Bullrog here. And fingers crossed, nothing happens with the girl. She might All not right. even have left. Uh, I got an idea, but that would be a terrible idea because we'd split the party. That night, once again, the fog rolls into town. Okay, I'm up in Bullrog, in full cover. The first sign that something is amiss is that the guards are yelling from the jail cell that is currently holding the friend, the stabbing friend, the guy who stabbed the other man earlier today. He's dead. Wait, what? He's what? dead. Oh God. Bullrog's asleep, though, right? This isn't waking yeah. Bullrog up. All right, is no. there fog? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, well, okay, there's fog. Bullrog's sleeping. Uh, Moxie will run towards the jail. I'm here. He'll go with her. Okay. Backup plan, I could just dimension door back out to Pidge. I've got Polymorph prepared. <laughs> if anyone comes near me, I'm going to turn him into a creature that I can trap in a jar. <laughs> so you guys run towards that. I'll do the Bullrog thing. I came in. There was this ugly creature, sort of humanoid, in the cell. They looked at me and vanished. And next thing I when I when I checked the prisoner, he was dead. Hey Mary, do you have revivify? I do believe so. I do. Moxie goes in and examines the body. I get a thirteen on my medicine check. There appears to be no wounds whatsoever on this body. And I will use revivify on him. Nothing happens. Uh, maybe read the revivify. <laughs> I touch a creature that has... I touch a creature that has died within the last I minute. I know. I know what revivify does. 
and nothing happens. Is he? Are they dead? The spell can't return a creature that has died of old age, or can it restore any missing body? And it cannot do certain kinds of death. Uh, it's just old age. Yeah, old age is the only limitation. The spell can't return to life a creature. I know, but this effect that this effect on the, that's being used specifically says they cannot be revived unless certain uh, unless certain things are met. So currently, revivify does nothing. Is Bullrog sleeping peacefully? Yes, Bullrog is sleeping peacefully. Hmm. All right. uh, Moxie turns to the guard. Was he asleep after sundown? I thought we were very clear about staying awake at night and sleeping during the day. I felt like I was pretty, pretty... We kept. We made sure that he did not fall asleep. After dark, right? So this happened while he was awake? Yes. We believe right. so. Uh, All believe right, fine. So. How about this one? I will use... Where is it? I'm I'm going to investigate the area. With that 13, do I find anything interesting in my investigation looking for like ectoplasmic goop or uh scorch marks or There are a pair of footprints, but that's it. Oh, do they look humanoid? Yes. There are no footprints going in or coming out, just two footprints. Right next to the body. So I am going to cast Speak with Dying on it. What's that? I I grant the semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse of my choice within range, allowing it to answer the questions I pose. The corpse must still have a mouth and can't be undead. The spell fails if the corpse was a target of this spell within the last ten days. Until the spell ends, I can ask the corpse up to five questions. The corpse knows only what it knew in life, including the language it knew. Answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive. And the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer if you are hostile to it or recognizes you as an enemy. Let's see. That's cool. Okay, interesting. Celestial beings. Yes. Which is weird because it's a necromancy spell. The head turns towards you. Okay. So what do you think, Moxie? What should we ask him? We got five questions. I, uh... Moxie looks around nervously as the dead body suddenly somewhat animates. Uh, jeez, Amiri, that's a... Oh, that's a creepy skill. I gotta gotta shoot straight with you there. Uh, did... I guess ask it Let's just let's just go for the, the, the shortest A to B here. Was the monster one of the old ladies that kill was the monster that killed you one of the old ladies that came into town the other day? Because I really personally I need to know if we need to exonerate these poor old women or do something about them. It appears to be the case. Although mm. they were they, they looked similar, but they were not it, they they did not look like the cre- the old ladies, but they had enough resemblance. Okay, maybe ask him uh, how, if this were a game, and he was the the old ladies and had taken him out, and someone were to ask, how would you like to do this? How would he describe that? I do not understand the question. <laughs> how did they kill him? Like, what was it like? What it my feel soul like? was removed from my. The soul was removed from the body. Oh, that's oh. why you couldn't use revivify because, yeah, revivify only works if the soul is able to be accessed. Well, thankfully, speak easily. with dead does not need a soul. Yeah, I know. I just double checked on that one. <laughs> oh yeah, hmm. it's all uh, chemicals and and electricity. Uh, so that's three out of the five. What made you the target? I do not know. Moxie's gonna pull a Mary to the side for just like a quick sidebar. All right, hey, before we uh, use up all the questions, do you think we should do like some like social responsibility stuff here? Like if he has any like family members that he needs to get a message to or, you know, uh, unfinished business, that sort of 
Oh, this is the final stuff. question, so... Oh, conundrum. Well, it's a small town. I'm sure everybody knows everybody. We'll just go ahead and give a vague... He said he loved the people in his life before he passed. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Everybody does. We could always spin it even if he didn't. Make him go out on a good light. So last question. It's got to be the connection between... Because if Bullrog's not being targeted... And this guy was, even though he was awake, it means that he has some connection to the old ladies or to the little girl. Well, yeah, ask if he's related to the little girl. Maybe he's the one that found her. Do you have any connections to the little girls, to the little girl that was taken, or the old ladies? I've seen the little girl in the streets, and i have that's it. The old ladies, not that I know of. So they really like to teleport into jail cells and kill living people, like conscious people. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Is Bullrog still sleeping soundly? Yes. Huh. I mean, to be fair, I could cast Speak with Dead at will. So we could probably get another. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Eh, well. Hmm. So do you want to find out if they have any message for their loved ones? We could. Except you can't cast it again for another ten day. You can't cast it again for another ten days, according to the spell. So, oh yeah, oopsie. All right, so I'm I'm in a tree waiting to cast aggressive polymorph against anything that comes up. Do you guys come out and meet me? Sure. Okay. I mean, they walk out to the to the forest to one of the trees and they call up to total cover, Pidge, and like, hey, Pidge. I think it was this one, Pidge. Pidge. Which one? (laughs) I pop my head out (laughs) from behind the trunk, and I'm like, nothing came for Bullrog. He's still sleeping. He likes these lady trees. Yeah, it's because it got that guy in the jail cell in there. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. He got, like, killed? Dead. Super dead. Ripped his soul out, Pidge. Ripped it out. That is horrible. Yeah. But then you wouldn't get to go to Tyr. Or anywhere at all. Does Bullrog have a soul? Oh, yeah, cool. Bullrog has a soul. Yeah. Bullrog, I pat him. I have no idea if Bullrog has a soul. But <laughs> of course he does. He's one of Melora's children. Look at him there. He's still sleeping. <laughs> Actually, you guys can't tell when he's not moving. You don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, guys, I'm getting a, a bad feeling about this. Uh, I'm going to... May I do a history check to see if anything... It was it was two old women, right? Yes, uh, I think recommend doing an arcane check. Actually, Ooh, okay, I, I can, can do, do that. that. Oh, so Twenty-five sick. old ladies capable of doing a form of teleportation, capable of ripping souls out of bodies, come at night causing nightmares. It sounds like you might be dealing with night hags. Night uh, hags. What are night hags? Since I rolled a twenty-five. Like, fiendish creatures originally for the from their the race was originally fey that made yeah. deals with devils. Well, Moxie specifically just wants to recall if she knows any stories about why they would need a third female, or if it's or if that's a coincidence. That's easy. A coven. A coven. coven. Must yeah. be three. So they can turn the little girl into a night hag. There's no. a really good movie uh, called Witch, if you guys haven't seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. And there's a 13-year-old girl in that, so that's what I'm picturing now. Yeah. Uh, night hags steal babies at a young age, eat them, and reproduce a new child that looks identical to the baby. <laughs> Once the yeah. baby yeah. reaches maturity, they become a night hag. That was a graphic movie. That poor Which, baby. Yeah. Uh, it made me afraid of goats for a little bit. <laughs> God, well, the baby <laughs> scene. Oh. I, I, uh, how have I not seen anyway, this one? I just remember being afraid of it. Huh? Oh. Um, oh, yeah. So this was a changeling. So the baby actually died 13 years ago. This little blonde thing was evil. Okay. Um, hmm. What's up with Night Hag territor- tori- territoriality? Are they going to move on? Be free, night hag. Not Go a, to the next village. Not if we have anything to do with it. 
Typically, they will stay in one area trying to turn individuals in an area to evil. Only when Uh, an individual is turned to evil by their effects can they suck a soul out of the body. Oh, they did steal it. Okay, so Dave turned evil, stole 40 gold, got his soul sucked out from his body. No, this was the guy who accused the other. This was the one that accused the other one and stabbed the other person. Oh, and Mary was right. Okay, so dude turned evil, genuinely believed that he lost 40 gold, didn't like his neighbor, stabbed him, uh, and lost his soul in the jail cell. Okay, so the night hag is going to continue turning people, so the three night hags are going to continue turning people evil and sucking their souls out. But good thing is we got people sleeping, so they're not going to be dead tired anymore. Hmm. More difficult to be evil when you are cheerfully well rested. Yes. Well, we've done our job here. <laughs> All right, let's uh, suit up and go hunt down some night hags, guys. She cracks her knuckles. Yep. Sounds good to me. I, hmm. I could search from the air. Yes. I will ask the trees. <laughs> um, Bulrog can speak one language that I can speak, so that's common. But can he retain tree communication? Can he still talk to other trees? I'm Polarog. I speak for the... I don't see why not. (laughs) Okay. I don't... Can he ask the other trees if in the area there is a nesting place for night hags? We should... What is a night hag? Uh, I... Oh, yeah. Um... (laughs) You can describe it. Surely. Teleporting dark fiendish... Eats Nighttime babies. foggy, baby eating. There should be three of them, and they probably sleep somewhere, right? <laughs> so, yes. Maybe the other trees will know. I will ask. And uh, Moxie's also going to recommend maybe if we could catch them outside of of their nest. Never, never a good idea to uh, attack a creature in its in its lair. Yeah, gotta lure so them out. Would- Find their lair, and then go wait outside it for them to leave their lair, and then pounce on them. Sounds good, Demi. And uh, okay. before we leave, Amiri's going to take Nahiri off her shoulder and be like, Listen, I have a message for you to send to Nula Seg. If we don't come back within three days, a week, we'll go a week. If we don't come back within a week, we are gone. And send level 20 adventurers in to take care of these night hags. I like it. Also, Nahiri can't die in battle. That's Pro, pro. (laughs) But if Nahiri dies, it comes back to life regardless. If its soul is intact. Hmm. So, Nahiri is sending that message in case something happens. All right. Bye, flying snake. (laughs) I wave. So Moxie and Pidge and Amiri will sit down and go over the information that Pidge has on night hags and try to come up with the best possible battle plan. We sit in Bullrog and Bullrog walks slowly towards the, <laughs> the lair. So we have full cover up in Bullrog. Bullrog does not yet know where the lair is. Oh, so it might take some time. Got to talk to all the trees. Mm-hmm. I can fly. <laughs> And tree to- tree communication is not that oh, yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah, it's probably slow. It might take us like a day. Have you guys ever seen a time lapse of a plant like rotating with the light and stuff? Mm-hmm. So they do move. It's just not at our speed. <laughs> okay. Um, if anyone else shows signs of being evil, that would be an immediate problem. But they might be satisfied. So like serial killers only kill like once every three months or something, if you've ever looked at the 70s serial killers. So we should have a... They shouldn't be attacking every night. So we should have enough time for Bullrog to communicate with the other trees before they strike again. Right? It's a bad assumption I'm making. (laughs) But the question is, is it one kill apiece? In which case, you got two more. Are they killing for food and they need three souls? Every three months? Or are they killing? Ooh, for fun. You rolled then... high enough. Oh. Yeah. Um, you, since your high was, a, your arcane check was a, such a high check, 
You know that where the night hags originate from, a soul of an evil creature recently turned is an incredibly valuable commodity. Ah, satisfying like a Snickers bar, not hangry for a while. Okay. <laughs> so. As in, it's worth money where they're coming from. An incredible amount. Oh. Oh. They're, it's they're soul trafficking. It. Oh, no. Oh, that's bad. I tell my friends this, and Bullrock, how you doing on the lair finding? <laughs> we have a lead. I... It is coming along. I should have it soon. Okay. Everybody strap in. Bullrog will take us at 30 feet per second. Bullrog's pretty fast when he's got a transmutation stone. <laughs> Lead the way, Bullrog. Well, walk for us and we'll ride you. I will fly. All right. Oh. <laughs> Bullrog simply begins to move. <laughs> Moxie, are you up in the tree with me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You little this... ones are acti- more active than I like, but you are pleasant to be around. That's right. You listen to your mama. <laughs> <laughs> and as he walks, Bullrog is scattering his pine cones. <laughs> I, I, it's a number of hours later. I have the information you seek. At least we think so. Okay, there let's, is a, let's go there. <laughs> there is a place in the uh, further end of the swamp where we do not like to grow. Yeah, that's probably a small it. house there. More, I believe it, it might be what you are looking for. We will head there. How f- Excellent. Riding on a tree. How far mm-hmm. away is it? Many strides. He doesn't know. He's not. You're talking to someone who doesn't, who doesn't know human, your terms that you would normally use. So, uh, yeah, he's probably pretty new to walking. Uh, <laughs> but again, thirty feet per second because he's got my transmutation yeah. stone. Uh, what is that called? Thirty feet per six me. seconds. Yeah. Yeah, it gives me plus ten feet per second, and I can hand it to a person if I want, or a tree person. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Transmuter stone. Mm-hmm. The the tree just continues to walk. It takes a number of hours to reach the the tree the small house, and it, the sun is now coming up. Perfect. They're weakest during the daytime, I imagine. Let's hope so. Be warned. I mean, so there the moment is that we can huh? mm-hmm. a many-headed one ahead. I a hydra. Huh. Yeah, there is a, a native hydra population in these swamps. That's true. <laughs> I killed one last week. <laughs> All right. Um, so false appearance. While the tree remains motionless, it is indistinguishable from a normal tree. I'm going to ask Bullrog to stop moving where we can see the house, but like not like next to the house, you know, like a fair distance away. Okay. All right. It's just a tree. There's just one more tree here than there was before. <laughs> I cannot approach this location I am sorry. Why not? I... Something about this location, I do not know. He's talking about the talking about the house, not the... Uh, the soil is full of plot poison. He can't... He can't go. <laughs> <laughs> but, Bullrog, you have 59 hit points. <laughs> I, I have am 48. Sorry. <laughs> I am sorry, All little right. one. Well, then... Picture a dotted line on the ground where Bullrog can't pass. We're going to ambush them on this side of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Beware ahead. I can see the head of one of, the, one of the heads of the creature ahead. Well, melee fighters have to come at us and cross that dotted line. So I wonder. Oh, no. I think it's got to be willing. Mm. All right. What do you guys want to do? I brought a tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Previous narrator only put the one mini-headed thing here, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> it, well, it makes everybody has parents and cousins, yeah. so this is the cousin of the. So there's well, night hags and a hydra. Folks, like um, we're going to take a short break here, <laughs> and uh, we will come for us. It'll be 
about 15 to 20 minutes. For the rest of you, it will be no time at all. Bye-bye. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we have to do the official sign-off. Can you say our names so that I can align the timing? With Pidge. Bye-bye. And Mary. See you in a second. And Moxie. Uh, see ya, see ya soon there, uh, listeners. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. You can find new episodes by subscribing through your podcast player or by visiting firebreathingkittenspodcast.com. Can you think of a friend who might enjoy this podcast? Please share it with them. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through your support. Tweet hashtag firebreathingkittenspodcast and we may, in a future episode, name a non-playable character after you. Leave us a review on iTunes, and we'll read your review at the end of an episode. Welcome back to the Fire Breathing Kittens. Everyone roll a d20. The one, I'll roll one, and whoever gets closer. Two. Sixteen? Uh, six. Okay, so right now it's between Mary and Moxie. I rolled a four, so... <laughs> All right. Roll off it is. Seven. Roll again. All right. I got a 14. What'd you get this time? Boss man. Okay, Moxie. Well, all right, then. Let's see. Well, we woke up pretty early in the day. Uh, Good uh, guild members that we are went and... Uh, to the job board and discovered oh this poor little town of hell nest they haven't been sleeping and they have had nightmares something is a mess in the nest so we make our way on the river boat to the lovely uh, swampy city of Gardilu. Uh then disembarked there and began heading towards hell nest where we we came across some rather surly uh, minotaurs we'll take care of them on the way back uh just turn them over to the authorities. Obviously, they're uh, some brigands. Uh, we made our way to the town of Hellnest, where we talked to Alder, a tavern owner, I think, and a blacksmith named Breeden, and someone else named Nate. We did some uh, scientific arcane experimentation to see if we could figure out what was causing the sleep. Spoilers, <laughs> turns out it's night hacks. Someone died... Pidge awakened a 100-foot-tall tree named uh, Bolrog, and we are on our way to attack these night hags. Also, apparently, another hydra has made its way into the swamp, so we have to figure all that out, too. And here we are. Okay. Sounds good. (laughs) It sounds like a busy day to me. I don't... (laughs) So... The tree points out the head of a hydra above the water nearby. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. There is a hydra. So, oh, God, a hydra. All right. I'm what try- if? I'm trying to figure out how. What if we get the hydra to, uh, to go aggro at the hags? They can sort of pick each other off for a little bit, and then we'll just swoop in at the end. Is the Hydra sleeping like a guard dog? Yeah. So. Oh. We need backup. So we go around it. Can we just dimension door? Pitch. I heard a rumor that there were druid, mm-hmm. high-level druids in the area. Oh, did you? I, I don't. That was just a rumor. I figured you might know. You were out this way recently, weren't you? Uh, I was. I didn't encounter any high-level druids. Um, but I'm open to your idea. You just need backup. This is taking on Hydra and Night Eggs. Hydras aren't that tough. <laughs> well, maybe we just need to sneak around it. Like, come in from a different direction. Away from water. Do hydras have wings? No. And we're in trees and one of us can fly. We could just do the old 
bombardment technique. Okay, could you? We could stay hidden in this tree, and you could go flying, Amiri, and you have a cantrip that does damage. And from above, from above where the Hydra can reach you, you can just cantrip down on that Hydra until it dies. And we'll just stay hidden right here. Hmm. Plan? Question mark. Do you have fire spells? I have Eldritch Blast. I could go 120 feet up from it and just. Yeah. Eldritch Blast is just magical energy, though. It's not really uh, elemental, is it? Crackling beam of energy. I have celestial damage, too. I have sacred flame. Oh, you do? Does that do any fire damage? Celestial. No, that you're, you're not going to be able to kill a Hydra. Well, with anything short of acid or fire. Well, Pidge, you've, you've fought a pit hot. You don't need fire damage. You just have to do more damage than it can heal. Yeah, you fought one before. You've seen it take damage. Yeah, it has a regeneration rate, but if you do more damage than it can regenerate, then that's an alternative way other than fire. Um, I'll dimension door inside of it and fight it in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds... Maybe save those spell slots. I have 300 gold. Would it be possible for me to pop back to town and buy a broom of flying and for me and Moxie? Moxie, you don't fly, right? No, I do not. I don't fly either. Do you want to rain death down from above upon this Hydra, everybody? Doesn't fly. Well, let's determine whether or not their shop has a broom of flying right first. Yeah, and it's uncommon, so it, sh it should be theirs. Yeah, they have a broom of flying. Okay, and it, it can hold two people. Do you want to... Do, do they have two brooms of flying, or do they have one? Are we riding... They have two together? brooms of flying! Excellent. All right, so I'm going to spend 300 gold. Moxie, do you have 300 gold? Uh, if not, I can buy you I'll, one. I'll give her one. Here. I'll gift it you to do? Moxie, my no, good I, friend. I do. No. <laughs> No, I, I uh, sold, sold some coffee beans a while back, so I, I got a little bit. All right, so I bought a broom of flying, minus 300 gold, officially recorded. You want to kill a hydra, guys? Sure, yeah, let's do that. <sighs> I, I don't want to. I want to have it kill the witches or the night hex. Yeah, I don't, oh. know. I don't think it's going to do that. Do you have any ranged weapon, Moxie? I have, I have some okay. javelins. <laughs> Perfect. That I can throw. All right. Well, uh, Bullrog, just don't move. No one can tell that you're not a normal tree. <laughs> and I guess we'll fly over to that Hydra and start attacking it. Uh, make ourselves some more Hydra boots. Although, if it's a tame Hydra, can we, like, change its allegiance? You want to suggestion it first? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I could have it attack them if I suggestion it. Does it need to be able to understand your language? Um, ah. Suggestion. How did they tame it? Anyway, the best way you can tame a wild animal, food. Oh, they teleport through. So there's food here, and then they like teleport through, so it happens to be guarding them, but it's not like tame. Yeah. Oh. That's like tame crocodiles when you have a bridge. <laughs> you walk over your crocodiles, and they'll eat anything that falls in, but... Okay, you're not actually tame. So, I uh, suggest a course of activity limited to a sentence or two and magically influence a creature that I see within range. Hear and understand me. So, yeah, you literally have to be able to understand that uh, it... He has to be able to understand me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just monster. He's just growl growl. So, I, I have two pairs of... Or I have one pair of anti-teleportation handcuffs, and Mary has one pair of anti-teleportation handcuffs. So the plan is, we scare off or kill the Hydra, and then we handcuff the hags and take them into prison. You have anti-teleportation handcuffs? I do, and Mary does, yeah. Interesting. I had no idea that you had that equipment. Okay. It's on my character sheet. Pandemonium prison handcuffs. Yep. Interesting. But I only have to, we only have two pairs, and there's three hags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know what do you guys want to do. One's a young I hag. Think... Moxie, Moxie shrugs and goes, "Guess I'll just have to kill the evil." Oh no! I mean, <laughs> just one evil. I can dimension Doris inside. 
As Moxie was saying, fighting things inside their lairs. Bad idea. I just meant we could get the cuffs on them. Oh. Well, they're not expecting us. We could just be like, pa. Is it still daytime? Uh, Yeah, it's daytime. <laughs> What's the name of your cuffs again? Pandemonium prison handcuffs. They're specifically anti-teleportation for plot reasons from the pandemonium prison predicament. Homebrew item. Yep. And plane shifting, I believe, too. Okay. Um, it is, guys, currently uh, daytime, so... All right. What if we just fly around to the other side of the hut where the Hydra isn't? Okay, we do that. We're on the other side of the hut where the Hydra isn't. Now we just gotta hope they don't have an alarm spell. We do want them to come outside, so could we, like, trip the alarm and then wait for them to investigate it? Yeah, just do a little knock and ditch. Yeah. That's if they have one. I'm not entirely sure. Or I, I could stand on the... I could be on the roof, and you guys get them to come out the door, and I'll jump down and cuff the two. I'm trying to decide whether... I'm trying to figure out if those would work against this abil- their ability. Does plane shift even count as teleportation? There, it, The handcuffs are anti-plane shift because it happened on the plane of Pandemonium. It was ah, okay. a story thing. We had to get the handcuffs on the prisoners in the plane of Pandemonium. Yep. Okay. So, then, so it's not yeah. technically teleportation, it's, it's like plane shifting. Okay. Prison. And teleporting. Yeah. Yeah, because they had to keep them in their cells, so anything to get. Yep. They're anti-escape handcuffs through magical means. Whee. Okay. Alright, so, the plan. We're on the other side of the hut, where the Hydra is not. We're going to try to trip the alarm spell so the people come outside, and then we're going to handcuff them, two of them, and we got to kill one of them. Sorry. <laughs> so that's our plan. But much easier to face one night hag and a hydra than three night hags and a hydra. This yeah. part two might be a lot shorter than I was anticipating. Oh, well. And I have a giant okay. tree. I can't prepare for everything, so. <laughs> that's okay. Huh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what yeah. makes it fun. Improv! Moxie flies up <laughs> in the air on her new broom of flying. Her <laughs> armor glints in the sun as she prepares. I have a question for Moxie and a Mary. Yes? If the Hydra appears, do you want me to concentrate on polymorphing it into a kitten during the fight? Or... Yeah, that's my okay. Nope, that's just that's my plan. So, okay, so if the Hydra hears us and rushes out, I'll yeah. polymorph it into a kitten. We'll grab the hags and dash away. So, and we've got enough carrying capacity on our brooms for one hag each. Perfect. So, question for Pidge: Is that me talking? Yeah. Now that you know a lot about these night hags, do you know any strengths or weaknesses that could come in handy that we should know about? I rolled a twenty-five on that Arcana check earlier. Do I? They have resistances to, to, well, they have resistance to everything except for, uh, non mag that's non magical attacks, uh, immunity to charm. Other than that, you're pretty good. All right, so don't use charm or non magical attacks on them. I say. So it has to be magical. Copy. Yep. All right, we've got a plan, you- and I've got a bullrog. So my plan is to. Knock on their door and then run back to Bullrog. <laughs> Knock on the door and run away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Zips down on the broom. Tick, tick. Okay. I'm going to let Moxie do the knocking. I'm going to full cover in Bullrog. Oh, yes. Moxie <laughs> will do the knocking. Clink, clink, Gladly. clink. Gladly. Hold on. All right. That is a 24 <laughs> to knock on the door. <laughs> Big police. Bang, 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 bang. Okay, did you run away like they're saying? And flies back up. Yeah, I'll, I'll zip up uh, 60 feet. A little old lady comes to the door of the house. Looks outside, side to side. Hello? Is anyone there? I would like to roll initiative so that I Yay, can cast something time. at her. Yeah, Nish. If, sure. that's, if that's Go okay. I'm... Oh, God. 18. 18 for me, too. I have a plus one to my... It's a 13 dexterity for me. 12. 5. 
Pitch will go before me. Whoa, I'm first? Uh, yeah. Just ooh. hold that action. Um, hmm. I'm going to hold my action, and if she gets... I'm in Bullrog's tree branches, so if she gets, like... Within 120 feet of me, I'd like to react with an erupting earth, but uh, until then, I'm holding my action. So, Pidge. Action uh, held. Moxie. Moxie. All right. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at the old lady, and let's see here. Make a rain spell attack. That's going to be a 24 to hit. That's a hit. And that is 11 points of radiant damage. <laughs> and the next attack made against this old lady has advantage. Okay. As she is now uh, kind of glowing in a soft golden light. Who did that? <laughs> as- Sisters, assist me! Sister, assist me! As a second little old lady steps out. The two of them shed their forms of the little old lady, becoming pretty monstrous. Here, uh, let me see if I can... Oh, yeah. With their purpley skin and dreadlocks. Here, if if anyone can't see, I'll link you an image of the night hag. They They are not pleasant looking. Use your words to describe the theater of the mind. What do they look like? (sighs) <sighs> Horns grow out of their heads. Their skin turns purpley and demonic. And their hands turn into claws. Scary. They are... These do not look human at all anymore. Okay. what? Is, who's up next? Do you want us to keep track of that, DM? Uh, sure. Uh, actually, it's a... It's a... And Mary, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So it's Pidge, Moxie, and Mary, and where are the hags in that? They are last. Yeah. Okay. I think they got right. a five. So we got the three of them. Did Moxie attack one? No, there's only two of them currently. Or the two. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And one is glowing golden, and you would have advantage. You fought with me before. You know. You know what that means. Okay, so I'm going to attack the other one because my rolls with Eldritch Blast. And I just had a double crit. Ooh. Somehow. Ooh. It For happens. 35 damage. Love it. Nice. Okay. That it will never, ever happen to me in my lifetime again. But. <laughs> okay. So Amiri will. Yeah. You kind of see her light up gold, like very Scarlet Witch-esque, except instead of the red arrow, it's like a golden celestial light radiating out from her. As she raises her hand, you see two crackling beams of energy shoot out from her fingertips at the night hag and zap her. Okay. She reels back. They, They turn... Towards Aunt Mary, because she's the one who did the most amount of damage. Leave us alone! And they point at her. Um, they fire off a... Both of them fire off a blast of energy... A ray of energy at Aunt Mary. Bring it. Okay. Uh, let's see how that works. Okay, it's an attack uh, roll... Wow, they changed at least. Oh, never mind. That spell doesn't work the way it used to anymore. Forget that. Uh, they, they. I'm not even gonna do that. Uh, they, they changed the spell up, so I'll just do something else. Um, balls of energy fly at Moxie. Oh, that spell used to be a lot nicer. What kind of damage but, was it? Was it radiant or? No, it was Raven Feeblement. Raven Feeblement used to sap characters of their strength instead of just. Oh, you do half damage with weapons now. God, I hate, sometimes I hate how they nerfed certain things for 5th edition. Yeah. Weird balancing things. <laughs> you take nine points of damage from one 
as magic missiles slam into you. And Mary, since she's the one who did the most damage. Nine. So, and ten points of damage as the other one slams into you. Seriously, this is the only magical attack that they have that does anything? Wow. Hmm. So I could basically just, like, walk up to them and endure their hits for four round and... Mm-mm-mm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Moxie's shaking her head no. Oh, they have melee. They have melee weapons. But these are the only magical spells that they have anything to do anything, so... All right. Top of the round. Back to Pidge. So how far away from them am I? You are currently... You're, you're still in the tree, correct? Yep, I'm in Bullrog. You're 60 feet away from the from the house. Okay. Um I I mean, on the one hand, I I probably noticed that Emery is not that injured and I've I've had some negative consequences from erupting earth in the past. Uh, I believe I've pink misted people two out of two times I've used it. So one cult leader <laughs> and and one bull, bullywog uh, met their end that way. So I actually don't want to cast Erupting Earth on them because I feel bad for them. So <laughs> I want to change my plans. I'm going to, uh, I can aggressively polymorph someone. That'll make the fight easier. I'll do that instead. Okay. So they have to make a save for, against yeah. that, correct? Yep. Yeah. So the range is 60 feet. A fourth level transmutation, casting time one action, concentration up to one hour. So the spell transforms a creature that I can see within range into a new form. So please make a wisdom saving throw. So plus two with advantage because of ability. Fifteen. My spell save DC is seventeen. Is what? Seventeen. Oh, okay. Okay. So the thing about Polymorph is that the target's game statistics, including mental ability scores, are replaced by the statistics of the chosen beast. So I choose a three-toed sloth as <laughs> the, the, the creature that this becomes, oh, no. because I feel it's easy to handcuff a three-toed sloth. Um, so <laughs> the one that doesn't have advantage on it becomes a three-toed sloth. So it, does it lose all of its abilities or something? It uh, Well, it thinks about as clearly as a three-toed sloth does. It oh. retains its alignment, so it's still evil and personality, but it uh, has the hit points of its new form and the and the mental ability scores of its new form. So, um, so, oh, welcome back, Moxie. The one that doesn't have advantage is now a three-toed sloth and capable of as much math and thinking skills as a three-toed sloth could. So. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm just going to concentrate on that. So that'll make it easier to handcuff. And I, I don't want to explode these things. I feel bad for them. <laughs> or rather, we could just fly that one back to town as a three-toed sloth. Or we could con- handcuff one hand. You know, we can catch all three now that one is a three-toed sloth. <laughs> <sighs> just don't, okay. uh, have fun, you guys. I'm still up in my tree. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to kill them. I feel bad for them. <laughs> yeah, I guess to be fair, if we cuff two together, they couldn't teleport. They ate a baby. Yes, they did eat a baby. And they will suffer for their crimes lawfully in jail, right, Paladin? Mm-hmm. Yes, in the in the pandemonium. Or just Nick and Wee's court system. Whatever, yeah, prison. you know. Uh, uh, they they need the no teleportation thing. They yeah. go into that alternate plane where we know the warden pretty well. Okay. So I'm gonna also uh Say nothing and do nothing. So from the trees, nothing happens. And for some reason, poof, three-toed sloth. (laughs) Great. Okay. Interesting. And it lasts for an hour, which is probably longer than... Or or when your concentration ends. Right. But I'm up in a tree in full cover, so... Very true. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Next up is Moxie. Me? Moxie. All right. Moxie is going to uh, seeing the sloth thing happen. Uh, she's insightful enough to uh, figure out, you know, she can she can pick up what's getting put down here. So instead of attacking, she's going to cast heroism at third level, just in case stuff gets weird. I think King's already got weird. We're um, dealing with a three-toed sloth here. <laughs> So so basically she like goes she 
high fives Abiri, flies into the tree, boops Pidge on the nose, and until the spell ends, uh, my pals and I are immune to being frightened and gain temporary hit points equal to my spellcasting modifier, which is three at the start Sweet. of each turn. Yeah. When the spell ends, the target loses remaining temporary hit points. And I will put this in the Facebook Messenger so that you guys can see what you're working with. And then, bonus action, I will cast, I will channel Divinity and give myself Legendary Strike just in case I need to do battle, which means I now will crit on a 19 or a 20. As you touched me, I handed you handcuffs. <laughs> I take them. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you there, Pidge. Hey, you're doing good up here. And then I pat uh, <laughs> Bullrog. <laughs> you too, buddy. And that's all of my movement and all of my actions. So I'm right there in, with my backside sticking out of the tree branches, I guess. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm Mary. So I will shoot at the one that is glowing with my Eldritch Blast. That is 25 and 21. Both hit. For a total of 8, 12, 20 damage. Okay. And then as a bonus action, I will kind of like glow as I heal myself with my Radiant Light for 10 HP back. Okay. The hag stoops down and picks up the uh, three-toed sloth and calls out to inside the house. We're leaving! And instantly the th two of them out of existence. And the town was saved from hags forevermore. <laughs> you search the house and find it empty of hags. Oh, are we searching the house? No, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that you search the house. I'm not even going to... The house huh. is empty, and there are no signs of the three creatures. Are there any signs of where they would go? Nope. Can I roll an investigation check for fun hag trinkets? Mm, you find... Well, I, I have a good investigation. Okay, sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Oh. Well, that's a 13. Uh, You find a bag that looks like it's made out of hide that's partially crafted. Uh, it doesn't look complete yet. Ooh, but it's like an almost complete bag of holding? No. Oh. Is, is it like an almost complete bag? It's just a bag. Oh. Is it made out of the skin of swamp creatures? It looks like it possibly is made out of human skin. Oh, gross. No, <laughs> I don't want that bag. No. This is a hag's bag. I want to give this bag a proper burial. <laughs> That's fair. I'll say some words. Do you guys want to like live here for a week and see if they come back? Oh, yeah. I'm good to camp out. Maybe not in, in here, but yeah. All right. Should we go take care of the Hydra? Uh, It doesn't come in the house, right? No, it shouldn't. Well, I mean... And it might just wander away if there's no more food. Or... Moxie, could you try to turn the Hydra to our side? Some ha animal handling? Sure, yeah, why not? <laughs> we got the food. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, first I'll go fishing. Hang on. Is that a big catfish? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're, no problem. We're in a swamp. Maybe we could get a gator. Oh, yeah. Can I Can I go gator fishing? It's a big, <laughs> it's a big meaty sure. thing, at any rate. So, <laughs> come on, dice. <laughs> I guess I have to clear that. Animal handling. Can we just imagine Moxie and Amiri wrestling a gator? And then uh, an 18 <laughs> to uh, try to tame okay. the Hydra. And during the next with, week. With the gator bits. Providing the Hydra with food, you manage to somewhat tame the beast. Oh, It is still nice wild, shit. but it... It doesn't snap at us when we walk by. It doesn't snap at you. That's good <laughs> enough. During, during the week <laughs> that you are here, the town reports no nightmares, and the hags do not return. 
Well, I guess we solved this one, huh, guys? So the town pulls together the gold reward of a thousand gold. Bef- a thousand gold. Before our week of staying no. there ends, I will telepathically speak to Nahiri because we have a telepathic link, just to let him know we're still alive. Okay. Now, and, and I'm gonna offer grief counseling to the parents, <laughs> and I'm gonna keep 300 gold so that I lost no gold this time and give the other gold to my party members. So I just broke even. So now I got a couple questions, guys. I'm figured out a way that I can extend this a little. I don't want to end it so soon. <laughs> How do you, where do you guys sleep when you're back in Nicomoy? My home. Pidge has an apartment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Moxie has an apartment with her, uh, with her uncle on campus, I believe. And I marry Liz with her husband and son. Okay. In Nicomoy, it has been a couple weeks since the incident with the, uh, the night hags. It is night, and the three of you are either sleeping or doing what you typically do when you rest. When your either dreams or whatever it amounts to it for and Mary are suddenly shattered by horrible nightmares. I wake up and look around. <laughs> uh, so there's a familiar face in the room with you who just smiles polymorph. and vanishes. Nope. Polymorph. Reactive polymorph. <laughs> okay. Let's do a wisdom saving throw, sloth. <laughs> exactly enough. 17? Yeah, I have a plus one and I rolled a 15 on the dice. That's only 16. Oh. <laughs> yeah, what was the number on the dice? 15 on the dice and a plus two to wisdom save, so... Oh, you said plus one before. I thought you said plus one. Yeah, it was plus two earlier. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright, so it escapes this time, huh? But now I'm hunting it. Mm. Yes. Now we know. Now we lay in wait. Yep. It took them a little while to find you, but this isn't over right uh, right now, so... Alright, I go the next morning to my... Well, no, I probably go right then to my friends at the guild hall. Moxie lives there, so I'm like, Moxie! Moxie! Oh, hey, ah, 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 oh, hey, I am. And I made up with her. By the way, none of you got any rest last night. Hey, bitch. One level of exhaustion. Oh, God. Disadvantage on skill throws. Cranky Moxie. Hi, Moxie. <laughs> hey, hey. I just... Hang on, I... I, I need more coffee. Hang on, just one second. <laughs> Is this Moxie or Crud Junior? <laughs> uh, I sit down at the like kitchen table that you probably have in your shared apartment, and I like push a coffee mug across the table at you because I saw a coffee machine and I just helped myself. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And she scratches her hair is like all poofy and like <laughs> tangled on one side just not not her she's not at all put together at the moment <laughs> like, we- it's like blue and cotton candy like giant fuzzy hair mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's like lopsided like bigger on one end than the other like you could see a couple of like bobby pins that she should have taken out or or sticking it out in odd angles <laughs> <laughs> would you like me to fix that for you i uh, no it's <laughs> She's in a bathrobe. I use prestigitation. Oh, yeah. Are you there? You probably came to the guild hall, too. Yeah. And so all three of us are sitting around the table. It's dark out. The birds are just now starting to tweet outside. And I'm like, hags. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, now now it's personal because they know where I live and I have a child. Yeah. Should we visit the divination school? And scry where they live and go get them when they're sleeping. I would like to buy a scroll of nightmares and fight them in their own minds, in their nightmares. (laughs) Get them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it sounds good to me. (laughs) Moxie stands up, cracks her back. So, uh, (laughs) where are we going? Oh, I school of divination. (laughs) Let me just change, change. It's going to take me about 20 minutes. Just, just a sec. And I got all my spells. <laughs> Looks like I found the only way to ruin Moxie's uh, good mood. <laughs> Sleep deprivation. 
Okay, so I probably don't care what my hair looks like. I have short cropped brown hair. I just stick a hat on top and I'm good to go. <laughs> and 20 minutes later, as the dawn is starting to break light across, because the sunrise is quite early in places near the ocean, we step out from the guild and we head towards the School of Divination. Okay. They're probably not open yet. <laughs> well, now I'm thinking, I wonder if I could pay somebody to come and put like a protective spell on my house where nobody else could enter. Yes, that's the school of abjuration. Yeah, I'm going to have to go talk to them. All right, we go there first. We go to the school of abjuration because they're open at all hours. They're kind of like a security. All right. And I'm going right. to talk to them about putting a spell on my house so nobody else could enter. Knock, 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 knock. A magic circle would do the job. <laughs> okay, would you mind casting that on my house? Yeah, we can do it. Uh, I don't know how much that would cost to do that kind of thing, but uh, off paper, I mean, I will work out the price. <laughs> yeah. Moxie will uh, order one of those, too, you know. Uncle's, he's, you know, he's pretty old, so. Yeah. That's... Like, just his room, if that's cheaper, if that's less cost, if I could just get, like, a magic circle. It would probably be le- it would probably be cheaper. Just around his bed, even. His rocking chair, he really does, he barely ever leaves that. Just, just that would. Uh, I want it on my house. I got kid, husband. Okay, I'll charge 500 gold. That sounds fair enough. I looked it up online, and it is a permanent teleportation circle would be 3,000 gold. Uh, oh, wow, okay. So an anti-teleportation circle, hold on. Well, a magic circle, hang on, is I click, I wait, a third level spell. So how much does that cost? It says it's 100 gold points per 10 feet. So let's say their markup is uh, they double the materials cost for their time and effort. So it would be 200 gold points gold pieces to pay someone else for 10 feet of magic circle, which is a 10 foot radius, 20 foot tall cylinder. And you're right. They can't do a, well, they can still get in if they succeed on a charisma saving throw. Hags aren't very charismatic though. Yeah. Well, Moxie will spring the, for the, did you say 200? 200 gold per 10 feet of protection. Yeah. That's enough for uncle's bed. <laughs> we'll just right. do that. So two, uh, at least 300 gold for the houses, 100 gold for the uh, rocking chair or the bed. All right. So 300. Pidge isn't doing any of that. She's in a uh, offensive what do you, wake up polymorph sort of reaction. I'll get mm-hmm. them again. If they, <laughs> oh, they should come at me again, she says, smiling. Oh, yeah. I mean, they could come at me. I just don't want them to come at Silgi. Yes. No, that makes sense. You have people to protect. I just have a bunch of shoes and crafting materials. <laughs> it is possible to use the magic circle to target a specific type of creature. When you cast this spell, you can elect to operate a restriction, preventing a creature of a specific type from... Leaving the cylinder. So yeah. it can enter, but then not leave. Yeah. So they can get in if they pass their charisma saving throw. They just then can't teleport back out. So you can yeah. trap it with your child if you want. Or... Oof. We could try to trap it with us. Yeah. We visited the Abjuration School. Now let's visit the Divination School and find out where they sleep. Good morning. I was expecting you. Ah, Divination jokes. <laughs> <Ay. laughs> Alright, let's skip the small talk. How much is it going to cost me? Uh, to, figure out, to figure out where the creatures are? Um, yeah. All right. Where the creatures will be when I go hunt them tonight. <laughs> we want them asleep, though, right? After I sleep, yeah. I'm going to take a nap and go hunt them. So okay, why don't we so want I them in the we're going to need uh, to cast... Um, what is that spell? I can't, I'm having a complete brain fart all of a sudden. Um, yeah, I don't know any of the divination spells. I just want to know where they will be sleeping, where they will be located tonight when I... Scry. Yeah. Well... Scry tells, I don't know what kind of divination magics there could be, but I just want to know, like, tonight, when I go looking for them, where will they be located? Uh, Oh, foresight. Foresight, maybe? Yeah, so we don't actually want to know where they are right now, which is what scrying is. We want to know where they will be tonight. 
All right. So foresight 5e. All right. I'll snip it for you. Oh, holy cow. Yeah, yeah this is awesome. Uh huh. Ninth level. Oh. And expensive. That's going to cost me, isn't that? <laughs> yeah. But uh, we'll know where they no are. Is. We will chip in and maybe get the guild hall to help uh, supplement. I mean, it's night hags. It's really for everybody's benefit that we take care of this. Yeah. So, DM, how much does Foresight cost? Yeah, I'm working on that right, right now. A lot. <laughs> it is a ninth level spell. And do they have a payment plan? <laughs> this is really what people tune in for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they listen. <laughs> it could be for this. <laughs> spell services, 5th edition. Uh, I think Xanathars has a, a spell casting price guide. They actually have a chart chart for spell services. That is useful. Uh, okay. Yeah, how much is a ninth level spell? Maybe we can't afford this. 25,000. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Just find out where they are right now, please. That's a that's scry. Okay, <laughs> that, that's level. easier to do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just we'll just go now instead of later. We'll just <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Divination, 125 gold. That's a little bit more affordable. <laughs> that one is literally on the chart, so and it's uh, easier to... Yes, I can cover that 125 gold. Okay, so knowing where they will be tonight, impossible. But, no, <laughs> well, for the amount of gold that I currently own. Actually, I got Scry. Oh, you do? I do. Is it going to use up a spell slot? Because 125 gold is less valuable to me than one of your spell slots. Yes, it will. Okay, so I'll just pay the 125 gold. So... Minus 125 for Scry. Got it. Written down. Okay, you said you have an item from these creatures. Yeah, from their house. Uh, here you go. And I hand over some herbs that I was going to try to make tea with, but was kind of curious if they were poisonous or not and hadn't gotten around to checking. I will see what I can get. I collect tea from the houses of people, apparently. <laughs> There's precedent. Oh, I am sorry. But they seem to be fighting. All right, here's another 125 gold. <laughs> yeah, they passed the wis they passed the wisdom save with uh, a great deal of ease. So, all right, they're in a hut to the north of town. How far away? A couple hours. Uh, so I can't dimension door. To the chocobo carriage. <laughs> Winona, Raider, get. <laughs> And we go. And we arrive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We travel by Chocopo. What happens? And I fly. I have, All right, I have. They don't currently have their Hydra pet anymore. No, but we find I got Winona. An old abandoned hut near the edge of town. Ballsy. All right. That's uh. Well, guys, we're here. What do you want to do? Well, I uh, kill him. Kill him, sound or is that's okay? There's three of them and three of us, so yours is gonna die. And Mary and me, do you want to handcuff ours? Well, we need to stop them from transporting again for sure. Yes, handcuff first. Questions. So, how about if we kill them, handcuff them, and then revive them? Yeah, I, I'm fine with. Do you guys have any ways to get more of those handcuffs? Nope. Hear me out, guys. We're, cl yeah. we're close to the guild hall. We're on the edge of town. And there are level 20 adventures just hanging around. Oh, they can cast uh, revive up to a century, is what you're saying. So kill them, handcuff them, go get Kaihaku to revive them. I more or less meant we call them backup. Oh, um, I don't really think we need backup. I say, holding five D12s. <laughs> like, what's the backup for? Because they're going to be dead after I attack them with Erupting Earth. All right. Yeah, you can hit them with Erupting Earth, then. What does Erupting yeah. Earth do? Five D12 of damage to all of them. 
What kind of damage? Bludgeoning. It's magical. There, it's got to be. Oh. I blow them up. <laughs> so you want me? You you want me to go knock on their door again, or are you just gonna <laughs> do the hut? Just the whole hut. I'm just hut? gonna blow them up, and then we can we can unpink mist them and handcuff them at the same time. <laughs> Sounds good. A pat Hitch okay. on the head. Go get them, Tiger. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull up actual dice for this online, like online D&D dice, because 5d12 is a lot of dice. Mm-hmm. So, yes, dice roller. Yes. Wizards of the Coast. 5d12s, please. Oh, really? Hmm. Okay. Alright. Um. So, I'm like, again, in Bullrog. Again. 60 feet outside the hut. And I do 30 damage in a 20 foot uh, is that radius? Yeah, 20 foot cube centered on a point of my choosing within 120 feet. Each creature in that area must make a dexterity saving throw. And it's now difficult terrain that requires a minute to clear by hand for a five foot portion. <laughs> the hut is splinters of wood right now. Two of them pass their dexterity saves. Okay, so they only take 15 damage. Yeah, I get an extra d12 for every slot above third. So that's 5d12. Yeah, the the cabin is gone. The hut, technically. Oh. And standing in the middle of the hut are three very ticked off old women. Well, one of them is younger looking now, but... Okay. Did they take 30 damage, 15 damage, and 15 damage? Yes. All right. That's what I did. And uh, my tree's going to attack them, too, next turn. Because I'm 60 feet away. So I guess it'll just move 30 feet closer. Yeah. Roll initiative. 15 for me. 21. That is a 14 for Moxie and a 17 for Winona. Enemies going last. Okay, top of the round. I believe that's a Mary. Yes. So Eldritch Blast, obviously. That is plus 8. 26 and 11. That's a hit. That's a miss. Alright, so that one did 7 damage. Okay. Either one. I'm good with it in either one. I think Winona's the one next on the initiative roll. Alright. Uh, Winona, sick em. <laughs> and it, <laughs> and it <laughs> charges at one of the hags. So I need a dexterity saving throw as Winona s- slams her chest at one of them and tries to bump it. Grapple, Winona, grapple. Fail. All right. The hag is knocked prone and is uh, thrown, you know, fifty or five feet away. And then okay. Winona is going to attack with her beak. She gets an unnatural 20 to attack with her beak. Okay, that's a hit. And... Ooh, 14 points of beak damage. Non-magical, so... Yeah, but still. Prone. Okay. Uh, Pidge, I think it was... You were the... Yeah, you were... Erupting Earth again? Sorry, Winona. That's okay. This time with 40 12s. 41 damage. So please make a dexterity saving throw. DC 17. Two successes. Okay, uh, the successes take 20 bludgeoning damage, and the failures take 41. Um, okay. If the one that failed both times is the same one, then it's just taken 71 damage. Yeah, she is the same one. <laughs> the, young, the older mine. ones are doing better with their saves. The younger one is still getting used to her new body. Let's say that much. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, Winona probably also took damage. Sorry, Winona. Oh yeah, she uh she'll have to be resummoned later. <laughs> Moxie, <laughs> I believe you're up next. Oh why not? Uh, that's fine. I'll bring you back later. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, it's okay. I knew. She knew. We, you know. I. This is why my animal handling is so low. Because <laughs> you keep on like, killing them. <laughs> That's why I spent a whole uh, several months in the temple, you know, converting her to to tear-powered. 
I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at third level at one of them. Uh, 23 to hit somebody. That's a hit. 16 points of radiant damage. Okay. Take that, foul demon! Okay. Enemies turn. They glare at you. And... Hey, hey, did the tree... You rolled... There was a, did you guys... You brought the tree with you? Oh, yep, yeah. The tree... It dashed 60 feet, because I've given it my stone, and it's in melee with them right now. Gotcha. Yeah. So it can't attack just yet. All right. No. But it's it's right up. If it could grab them, I don't know if that's an action or whatnot, but the attempt is for the tree to grab them. <laughs> the okay. tree has much strength. <laughs> Unlike me, the tree has a plus four to its strength ability score, <laughs> so... That's the plan. Okay, so the uh, night hags look up at the tree, and they send magic missiles flying at it. 17 points. Total? And 14. 17 and 14? 11, 17, and 14. 11, 17, and 14. Wait, so... Three attacks, 11, 17, and 14 for 42 damage total? Yes. Okay, my tree is still up. It's got 59 hit points. Minus 42 is 17 hit points left. Bullrog! All right, back to the top of the round. Can it make an attack of opportunity against them because they melee attacked it with magic? Sure, go ahead. Uh, no, um, that requires a feat to do that, so... Because, well, when you make a attack with magic in melee, doesn't the enemy get to... Oh, true. Right. Attack of opportunity. And it moved 60 feet, so it's right up. Because I was 60 feet away. You're right. It gets one attack opportunity. One reaction, so. One attack of opportunity from the tree is... Oh, okay. An eight to hit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The tree doesn't hit the hags. No. Tree tried. Good job, Bullrog. Now get out of there. (laughs) These... Night hags are actually pretty strong physically, and uh, they yeah. actually have a decent amount of AC, so. Yeah. Okay. Is it back to a Mary? Yes. All right. All right. I'm going to Dimension Door behind them to try to cuff one. <gasps> Good job. Okay. Currently, one of them is prone on the ground. The younger one or one of the older ones? Yes. The younger one. I'm going to try to cuff one of the older ones. Okay. Uh, make a, I guess, athletics check. Uh, I guess that's about the closest one, the best one I... No, no, wait. Um, sleight of hand. Oh, very good. I'm really good with sleight of hand. Uh, 17 plus 7. Yeah. You got one. Oh, excellent! <laughs> oh, you see a pair of handcuffs in Bullrog's hands. As you see, <laughs> I marry just standing next to Pidge, just poof. What is this? Oh, you came back? Oh, no, I was I was next to you. I'm trying to do the... Oh. So she just... I'm like, bye. <laughs> poofs and appears behind the one as she pulls the cuffs out and latches it around the wrists of the older one. Yay. One down. Yeah. Okay, and then Bullrog has my handcuffs, of course. Um, they they can still fight. They just can't. Uh, they just can't escape. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, after Mary is me. Okay, so I'm gonna have Bullrog go first, so I don't forget him. <laughs> so Bullrog is gonna uh, having only 17 hit points. He's not feeling super great, and he stoops down and with the Plus four strength. I don't know how to handcuff people. It, is it a grapple check? I don't know what to do. Oh, and sure. I was actually going to healing light him as a bonus action, too. Oh, sweet. So that would have been eight, 11 HP back. Oh, thank you. Yay, 28. All right. Um, so Bullrog, uh, I rolled a three on the dice. <laughs> so it has a seven overall to handcuff a hag. <laughs> yeah. The hag pulls her grip out of the tree's branches. Not nimble. Ah. <laughs> and and then I'm gonna try to aggressively polymorph. Um, 
because I don't want to kill my friends and there's now a Mary and Bullrog and a dead bird and I'm like, hey, maybe I should stop exploding things. <laughs> so... That would be useful. No, keep yeah. going. Uh, but you're right there. I, I don't want to kill you. Okay, I'll so from it. 60 feet away, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'd kill Bullrog. Uh, okay, so um, I... The target must make a wisdom saving throw. It's the non-handcuffed one that is doing good with the hit points. A uh, hag still remains where it's still. <laughs> you hit 17 or above? I rolled 18 on the dice. Wow. Okay, well, I'll get you next time. And that ends my turn. Moxie, it's your turn. <laughs> Having advantage against spell effects, it comes in handy for these yeah, two. I so I, yeah. I have the same thing myself. I have advantage on wisdom saves. Yeah. Against. Yeah. Just helps us when you say what you're old. Uh, all right. So uh, before she takes off, Pedge, are you going to do any more exploding before I run over there? <laughs> I'm sorry about your bird. No. I was... <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. She's with Tear. She'll come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Good. She gives you a thumbs up and is going to head towards the hag's wielding. Sounds like you really have a top tier companion there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, tier. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the first swing, that is only a 12 to hit, but I will swing again because nope. they get two attacks. And that is a 24 to hit. With yeah, my enough. plus plus one battle axe. Oh, that is going to be 14 points of magical weapon damage. And against which one? You have one's prone on the ground, two are standing, one has a cuff on at her wrists, the other one doesn't. The one that is standing that is not cuffed. I will say I'm using okay. like the broad side of the axe. I'm trying to like knock her out, not slice into her. Yeah. And um Woohoo, lawful good. <laughs> uh let's see here. Oh shoot. I know I have a bonus. What bonus do I want to do? You know what? I'm gonna bonus action turn invisible. What? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I could do it once per short rest. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Okay. And well, now that hags have a couple targets again, other than the tree to deal with. Yeah, but the tree is still menacing and threatening. Yeah. Can you cast spare the dying on yourself? I have I potions so. to save you. Because <laughs> I was gonna say, feel free to blow us up. I. Oh no. I <laughs> I'm not gonna catch I will no. be okay. Oh. Two of the hags turn towards the tree. Only six points of damage from magic missiles. Down to 22 hit points. Six. So 12 points of damage from the other set of magic missiles. Down to 10 hit points. Thank you, Amiri. I would have dropped. <laughs> you are welcome. And Amiri's gonna get a blast full of magic missiles from the third one that's on the ground currently. So, another 12 points of damage, and the tree and everyone that's currently near a hag gets an attack of opportunity. Ooh, can I attack handcuff attach? I was just going to say, could I take the cuffs from the... Because I'm right there in melee with it. Could I, like, take the cuffs yeah. wait until Wait until your round, until your turn of combat. Oh, okay, just a normal attack action. All right, then I'll... Ooh, 25 to hit this time from the tree. That's a hit. And then 3d6 plus 4 bludgeoning damage. Non-magical, but still. <laughs> 14 bludgeoning damage from the tree. Bullrog. Is that, is that before the or after the resistance? Before the resistance, so it's only 7 actual bludgeoning okay. damage. Yeah. So my Eldritch Blasts is... Uh, you only get a melee attack again as an attack of opportunity. Oh, then never mind. I'm not very good with melee. At all. Moxie, I believe you're close enough to one of these creatures. I am going to uh, skip 
attacking because that will break my invisibility. Okay. Well then, and Mary, you're up. I am going to try to get the cuffs from Bullrog and try to cuff the other one. Freely given. Freely given. Bullrog is one of us. 20, let's see, 7, 22. Okay, congratulations. The second night hag is cuffed. Now I just got to worry yes. about the little one. I will try to polymorph that one on my turn. Get these infernal things off of us! <laughs> Negative, thank you. Stop eating souls! Hey, we both want things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it my turn? It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. So first, Bullrog is going to try to hit the prone one. Do I get? I don't. I don't normally melee attack. So you as get attack. You get advantage on it. Okay, good because that was a five. All right, that's much better. Um, so Bullrog uses a seventeen to hit. Does I hit to beat it? And then sixteen bludgeoning damage, which is eight after the resistance on the prone one. Okay. And I would like to polymorph that one if possible, so please make a wisdom saving throw or become a three-toed sloth. Three-toed sloth. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, we did it. All right, so the third one poops into being a three-toed sloth, and just to remind you, it has the intelligence, like like the, um, yeah. it's got its personality, so it can still want to eat souls, but as a three-toed sloth, it might find that difficult. <laughs> It's, it's a very ornery three-toed slot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and as long as I concentrate on that, I can keep it going for an hour. So, um, yeah, we're just on the edge of town, so we can. So, yeah. Are they still going to try to attack us? Because they could still. Yes, current combat is still oh, yeah. going on, so don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they're handcuffed, but um, so I would like to try to tie up this three-toed sloth with a bunch of rope. <laughs> well, you'll have to wait until the end of combat before that happens so uh let's continue they can't escape so knock them out guys uh moxie says sure thing as she pops out of uh being invisible and with the broadside of her battle axe Get again moxie. okay it is a 17 on the first we need to beat it with Seven points of radiant damage. And then on the... Okay. Um, oh, she's... Hold on. She's also going to... Sorry. Yeah, cast uh, Thunderous Smite on her weapon. Because that's important. So that's an additional okay, that's... nine points of thunder damage. Okay. And then on the second swing, uh, that's only going to be a ten. So she misses on... So miss. The second spin. All right. Is there a three-toed sloth and is that an actual D and D or is it? Uh, let's yes, there see. There is. Is there? Yeah. Oh. All right. Well. Um. Yep. Uh. Oh. Okay. Never mind. It's just a, it's a dire sloth. I don't think you were gonna nah. turn it into a dire sloth. Mm -hmm. I could get my monster. Hold on, I, I got a monster manual over here. Oof. This is the stack of books. So this book in the very, very back of it has some like normal. So I'm on page like 341 of the monster manual, and it's got some like normal animal stats, like a riding horse, a rhinoceros. I'm just gonna adjust the giant sloth's uh, stats. If that's okay. Yeah, I mean, you can use, like, a mule stats if you want. It's probably, like, a mule. So, page 333, that's probably very similar. A medium unaligned beast. So, it has plus two to hit, reach five feet, hits with 1d4 plus two damage. All right, I, yeah, all right. Just uh, for the heck of it, I'm going to use... Uh, th th since this is an evil creature, I'm just going to continue with the... Uh... <laughs> Have fun, giant sloth. <laughs> Or three toed sloth, not giant sloth. Yeah. Yeah, so it gets a d4 plus two. And plus two to hit. Okay, let's continue this fight then. Uh, who's up now? The hags. Don't drop <laughs> right. the sloth the... unconscious. 
Yeah. yeah. The hags I stop shall. firing their magic missiles and flex their claws. I mean, they're handcuffed still. I know. This is the only thing they use up the last of their magic missiles per day, so they uh, have nothing else to do. Their other spells are not even worth mentioning in combat. Hmm. They uh, so headbutt us. They could headbutt us. Yeah. I mean, they could still try to use their claws, but I guess it would be a disadvantage. Actually, you know what? The wi- the hag points <laughs> at the giant tree. Make a. Oh, never mind. That's an attack roll. Okay. That's a hit. Are you knocking my tree unconscious? It's going to use Ray of Enfeeblement on the tree. Oh, my strong tree. (laughs) Not much longer. Um, It's a hit, so all of its... uh, For the time being, all of its attacks are cut in half. Oh, Bullrog. I don't feel so good. <laughs> yeah, you're at 10 HP, buddy. <laughs> On each of its turns, it gets to make a constitution save against the spell. Okay. So, but yeah. All attacks dealt against these creatures by the tree will do half da- further half damage. So uh, that's not going to be much against these. Nah, it takes me down to like a quarter because I do non-magical damage with Bullrog. You did a good job, buddy. Come home. Pokeball, return. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tree it. It's a pincer. Huh? It's a giant pincer. It's a yeah. tree, so that... Uh, yeah. Sudowoodoo. Yeah, Sudowoodoo. All right. Sudowoodoo is uh, similarly a mock tree. It's rock type. Yep. Hmm. I know. Anyway. Yep. Return. All right. So <laughs> the hags... The hag... Well, not very good, not very effectively, but tries to strike out at a Mary with her claws. Disadvantage because the handcuffs are on. Mm. That does kind of make it a little hard to hit a target. <laughs> okay. Oh, you should be glad I have disadvantage. <laughs> that would hurt. Oh, that's a miss. I'm pretty sure a 15 does not hit a Mary. Oh, it does. Oh, okay. I, I'm a warlock. It's not hard to hit us. Right. Yeah. You are right. Spellcasters. If I did not have advantage, a uh, disadvantage, that would have been a nat 20. Oh, yeah. That wouldn't have been good. So that is 11 points of slashing damage. Okay. The other ha- the the sloth, technically, <laughs> is going to move up and claw, try to claw... <laughs> I love that uh, it's still fighting. <laughs> it's ornery. It's moving at, like, sloth speed. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> okay! Wait, where is... That's the most... This is the most effective sloth in the world. It just rolled a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> 2d4. <laughs> Yes. It's wow. very angry. <laughs> yes. No sloth has ever felt this angry in real life, so... Five... So, eight total points of damage. Oh, no, on... On Bullrog? No, it can't get that far. <laughs> oh, okay. On a Mary? Against a Mary. Oh. Eight? Ah! You, you got a little creature clawing at your... Leg, (laughs) currently. (laughs) All right. Top of the round. Hit Mary. Hmm. A really bad-tempered sloth. (laughs) Don't kill it. It'll revert back to its original HP. Don't do it. (laughs) It's a bonus action. I will use Healing Light on Borog for 15. Oh, wow. Thank you. Back up to 25. And then I'm going to say, hey, Bullrog, in return, how about a hug? Hmm? Oh, Bullrog is a boy <laughs> tree. <laughs> okay, oh. you're hugged by a tree. Something tree huggers wish they could <laughs> receive back. You've received it. <laughs> <laughs> and when they hug, you see a pink 
poof of smoke <laughs> as a were tiger <laughs> stands right there. Oh. All right, and here I was thinking I wasn't going to be seeing the transformation this session because of all the female <laughs> characters. In the yeah. Yep. Pull rugs a guy. Brought in a tree. All right. Pitch so reserves. Oh, uh, what were the stats for that? <laughs> all right. So I am going to bite one of. Uh, we'll scratch one of the hat. Uh, I'll bite the sloth. Just because. Oh, don't don't attack the sloth. Don't attack the sloth. Why does it turn back? If it turns yep. back, it goes. If it drops, right. it'll turn back to the hag. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bite and then the it'll one, be then. able to teleport again. I'll bite the one then. Uh, wish I could see the actual stats on this. On what? A weird tiger. Yeah, I don't have my monster manual next to me. Oh, um, I do. Uh, so what... look it up. Should be page there... 211. Yeah, page 210. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got you in front of me. You make a bite with a plus 5 to hit, reach 5 feet, one target. Hit is 1d10 plus 3 piercing damage. Alright, so that's 16 to hit. That's a miss. And you also make uh, two claw attacks. Or, wait, what is this? Word? One bite or two claws? Or, what is that? In hybrid form, it can attack like a humanoid or make two claw attacks. I gave you the bite stats. Yeah, hmm. I did the bite. Oh. Well, it's the same thing for, uh, it's plus five to hit for your claw, too, so you could, I don't know. That would have been a miss either way. But you get okay. two claw attacks. All right, then the other one is fifth, 18. That's a hit. And what's the scrap? The 10? 1d8 plus three slashing damage. D8. Is two plus three five slash. Okay, well, we already determined that the uh, your character does magic damage since it's a wearer. So magic claws. Yeah, they yep. actually. Um, if you get if you bite people, they have to like be cursed with wear tiger like anthropy if they don't make a proper. Con so that's a, a definitely magical attack. We already. Mm -hmm. I I can't infect people though. That one we've already. Right. Yours is hereditary. Yeah. So one of the handcuffed... So the plan is to drop the handcuffed ones to zero so that we can stabilize them, tie them up with rope, and then handcuff the uh, sloth. So did the handcuffed witch hag thing drop to zero? No? Okay. These things have a lot of health, so... Okay. Uh, who's that? Uh, that's... Uh, no. Uh, Pigeon. Yep, so that was Amiria's turn. She transformed into a tiger and attacked them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a concentration going on the sloth, so I think how that works is that I cannot use another concentration spell, but I can use a non-concentration spell. That yes. is correct. Okay, so I use the first level spell. I have four first level spell slots of Canapult, which has a range of 150 feet. I choose Ooh, an object nice. weighing one to five pounds within range that isn't being worn or carried. Uh, it's a rock. I just find a rock. Or a pine cone from Pull Rock. And I... Canapult it, um, and I'm actually going to cast this at, I can cast this at third level. There we go. Good spell. Yeah. And then uh, for each slot above first, I get to uh, increase the damage by 1d8, which means that it's 5d8 of bludgeoning damage if you fail on a dexterity saving throw against a save of 17. Okay, it fails. Okay, and then thanks for this handy dandy dice roller because I don't want to be rolling five dice. <laughs> so, uh, 5d8 bludgeoning damage is 21 bludgeoning damage. Okay, and that is magical technically since it's a spell that's doing it. So, okay. Against one of the handcuffed things. Okay. And then Bullrog's going to attack, probably not going to do much because it's at quarter damage at this point. <laughs> and that was a seven to hit. So, Bullrog's like, eh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Array of Enfeeblement is a concentration spell, so... Oh, so he tries to roll a constitution saving throw? Well, the, I remember yes, that. Yes, he does. Have the... Uh, that's also a three, plus two is five. Have the hag, have the hag, the hag that cast it, has she done a concentration check since she's taken damage? 
Or has she taken damage? Uh, That's okay. I, I rolled a like, not yet. hit. Uh, since uh, well, <laughs> but if she drops it, then yeah, it won't matter. Yeah. Okay, who's up next? Uh, Tis- Moxie. Or- Tis I. Moxie. Uh, Don't kill the sloth, I say. <laughs> I, big thumbs up at Pidge. You got it, boss. And <laughs> Uh, well, I heard that through somebody. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, more uh, broadside bludgeoning uh, with my Battle X. So, oh, natural 20. Okay, that's going to be effective. So, Is it lethal or non-lethal? All non-lethal. Just, just broadside of smackaroos. Yeah, unconscious hags. And I need to roll... So take me just a second to make sure I get all of my. So that's going to be 18 points of radiant. Or I mean, sorry, 18 points of magical damage from the battle axe. Plus, because I still have my thunderous smite going, that will be four of these bad boys, right, y'all? 12 points of thunder damage. And I need. A strength saving throw. Doesn't matter. The hag crumbles to the ground. Cool. Yeah, unconscious hag. We finally managed to do enough damage. These things are healthy. Uh, <laughs> and there's also a loud, booming crash of thunder <laughs> uh, when that happens. So I will turn to the other uh, still standing hag, and with my second attack. And the broadside of my sword. Let us see. Is that going to be... Oh, I missed. That's only a 15. But yeah. still standing in the rubble of the house with the creepy, creepy hags crumpling to yep. the ground with the the bolt of thunder. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, Pidge. Uh, I think after Moxie is the hags. Mm-hmm. You ha- Did you go this round? Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a crackle of thunder? It's a crash. It's like a big the, boom. Uh, brawl. <laughs> Yeah. The hag takes a swipe at Moxie. I'm guessing a 17 does not hit. It glances off my armor with a... <laughs> <laughs> and the sloth? <laughs> and the sloth claws out of Mary. Uh, 17 does hit. I know that. Yes. For five points of damage. Okay. Back to a Mary. All right. I will do my scratch, which is eight. That's a miss. Yep. And then the bite. Uh, it's two claws. Or two claws. All right. The other claw is 21. That's a hit. What did you roll on the first one on the dice? I rolled a three. Plus five, eight. And this one was a yeah. 16 plus five, 21. And then, and then it's a D8 plus 3 four slashing damage. Four plus 3, 7. Okay. I got my manual now. Okay. And she needs to make a constitution check. Uh, Not from the, the claws. The hag does. And Mary can't wear anything. Yeah, I can't. I'm not, that's not the reason I'm doing it. Oh, this is the one that's it's enfeebling. Bullrog. Yes. Ah. That's correct. Okay. Are we playing? And Bullrog feels his strength return. <laughs> the leaves raise 30 degree angle. <laughs> Are we flanking right now? Yeah. I think oh. so, yeah. Because yeah. that would be advantage. I think. Because you dimension doored on the. Yeah, uh, I came up right, behind roll, it. Roll your other claw attack then, then Mary. All right, that's uh, 16. 11 plus 5. Nope. Still misses. Eh, tried. Okay. And then it's back to me. Are you done with your turn, Mary? Yes, I can't bonus. Okay. Alright, then I, I'm going to have Bullrog go first, so I remember. Poor Bullrog. Uh, rolled a two on the dice <laughs> to hit. So, um, it does a six hit. No. Okay. <laughs> and then I am going to catapult at I have a third level spell slot. So, that's another 5d8 for another pine cone. If you, so please make a Dexterity saving throw. 13. 
You fail. You take 17 bludgeoning damage from a pine cone. <laughs> Bullrog's revenge. <laughs> All right. Does the hag in the handcuffs go down? Not yet. Okay. And Moxie? All righty. What about you in particular? Oh, yeah, that's right. No idea. What about the tree? Is the tree going to do anything? Tree missed. And I hit with a pine cone. <laughs> right. okay, Moxie. Yeah, Moxie uh, misses with her first swing, but gets a 26 on her second swing. That's a hit. And that is 11 points of magical weapon damage. Okay. Plus, cr- clash, crumble, clang. A s- five points of thunder damage and a strength saving throw. She's not looking very good. But she does successfully with a 17. Okay, yep. She is not knocked prone. <laughs> okay, she's going to hit Moxie. Okay, that is a 23. That gets me right on the calf or the arm, or like that right between the plating on my upper arm and my elbow. She mm. gets me, yeah. Four. A 12 points of damage. Mm. Slashing your arm open with her handcuffed claws. And the sloth? And the sloth. He, 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 he. <laughs> yeah, Mary, you're up. <laughs> the sloth missed. Yeah. <laughs> the sloth just tries to... <laughs> <laughs> He's moving really slowly, listeners. <laughs> and she just... And Mary looks at that coming, raises her tiger eyebrows, and casually steps to the side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, sloths. Not very good at combat. <laughs> and then the plan is we'll, we'll uh, switch the handcuffs over once we've got... So we've got one of the hags unconscious. Once we've got the second unconscious hag, then we'll tie those up with rope, keep them stably unconscious, and then uh, handcuff the sloth. That way it stops biting us. Because we can't drop that one to zero HP. And then we'll take him to jail. Yeah, once a Mary gets back. Okay. Do we want to... I'm not sure how long she's going to be gone. Do we want to... Oh, 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 she's back. All right, (sighs) go ahead. It's your turn. Okay. There's a a witch in handcuffs. Scratch. Uh, One was 16. No. This is the other one being 23. Yep. For 8 plus 39... Uh... Six and three, nine damage. Okay. Did the witch go down? This hag is looking really, really haggard. Ha. Ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, I had to say it. <laughs> okay. Is that the end of your turn, Mary? Yes. That's all I okay. can do. Bullrog takes his giant tree branch arms and slams them down with a nat 20. On the witch who had been enfeebling him. <laughs> 18 bludgeoning damage, which is 9 because it's not magical. Okay. Does the witch in handcuffs crumple unconsciously and not yes, dead? Yes, she does. This non-lethal, because it's, it's not a magical attack, so I'm allowed to do non-lethal damage. Yep. Okay, so now we've got two unconscious handcuffed witches, or and hags, a and a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be like, guys, switch the handcuffs over to the sloth. <laughs> And we'll tie up the unconscious ones with rope. And I, I, I start walking forward, so I move. I can only move uh, 25 feet without my transmutation stone because Bullrog has it. So I move 50 feet closer, so I'm 10 feet away. And I, I share that with them. Let's tie them up. What if we have a handcuff on each one? Like one cuff? Just Yes. Let's make a ring around the rosy. <laughs> of... <laughs> mm-hmm. That works. Yeah. Or I think we can make a line. (laughs) Moxie will spend her turn doing that. Connecting them (laughs) all via... One very dejected looking sloth is currently... (laughs) And I'm I'm gonna... 
give you guys my rope. I'm not very good at sleight of hand, but um, it's so I checked the rope stats, and hemp rope says it has a DC 17 to escape against. Um, it doesn't seem to matter who ties it. So I've been doing that wrong this whole time. But um, so I, I hand you guys my rope too, so that we can avoid getting bitten by the sloth, <laughs> and then we can transport them back. Because I can only uh keep up polymorph for one hour, so we got to get on this. <laughs> Let's get back to town. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So with pair of handcuffs between Hag 1 and 2, and pair of handcuffs between Hag 2 and Sloth, <laughs> so none of them can teleport. You successfully managed to get back into town. Yeah. I imagine we can use, like, our brooms for that, because each broom can carry two people, right? And I yeah. could you also brought the chocobo carriage with you, so... Uh... And then I killed the chocobo. Uh, and then oh, I... that's okay. Um, <laughs> before we go, Moxie... Oh, just hang on here. Just uh, This will take me ten minutes. I just need just ten minutes here. And she will cast Find Steed, and a little moat of light falls down <laughs> from the sky and expands and shimmers... And there is Winona once again, ready to go. I'm so sorry, Winona. <laughs> she she headbutts you. It's okay. <laughs> like how aggressively does she headbutt? <laughs> oh well, let's see. Um, she's <laughs> hold on. Is this a boop or a bump? <laughs> it's it's attempting to be a boop, but <laughs> you are a tiny thing. And she is a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pidge dies from friendly bludgeoning damage. <laughs> uh, no, she she's able to control her how much strength she uses. So it's a lot like when a horse rubs its head up against you. It's like a little forceful, oh, okay. and you kind of get pushed to the side. Oh, but yeah, it's like that. All right. I was gonna say. I, her a bunch okay. of good <laughs> I could spare the dying. You're okay. So you managed to get the hags back to town quickly. Yes. We want to go to the jail. All right. The jailers put the hags into custody and come out carrying three stones in their hands. And two pairs of handcuffs, right? Because I want those back. <laughs> I believe these can... You can keep these. He hands you the stones. They will keep them from... Without them, they can't go anywhere. What? He hands you... These are called soul stones. Basically, without these stones, the hags can't uh, plane shift. Okay. Oh. They're, so. also worth, they're also worth a thousand gold each. Ooh. So we could plane shift with these. No, only they can use it. Yeah. Only the one who created them and the other ones who created the, oh. soul, the stones. Moxie would feel uncomfortable about that. (laughs) So, yeah. Can I have my handcuffs back? Yeah. Yeah, these stones are (laughs) worth a thousand gold each. Are they like the evil creations of hags who sacrificed innocent people to create them? Uh Uh-huh. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to keep that. Yeah. Yeah, let's donate these to Azarines. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be selling that. She'll buy them at market value. That's yeah. pretty much the exact definition of what these stones are. Is mm-hmm. well, ew. I guess well. Sho- Shoshana will pay you market price. As yeah, far as everyone say. else knows, there is still no Azrine. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Amiri knows. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us for the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Actually, this whole party knows about Azrine. Oh, that's true. Pidge and Amiri were there, and Amiri would have told Moxie. Yeah. Signing off our <laughs> Pidge. <laughs> Bye. And Mary. Bye. And Moxie. Oh, boy, I need to go on a shopping trip soon. <laughs> Bye. Right. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. You can find more adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, all one word, podcast. We have official merchandise on Redbubble.com. 
Go to redbubble.com and search for works from your favorite characters in the store Fire Breathing K. You can get a detective's notepad with your favorite character or the Fire Breathing Kittens logo on it. Firebreathingkittenspodcast.com has links to topics that may interest you, such as a wikia with entries for different characters, a Reddit page where you can discuss the episodes with other listeners, and more.